55 degrees outside and we're looking for a drizzle and maybe some snow as well before it's all over. That means the third member of our team needs to bundle up. Noxie, how's it going down there? No problem, Joe. I'm ready to go and so is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Got to show you some guys. Keep your eyes on number five right here. Dewan Gross, one of the best punt returners in college football. Already returned three punt returns all the way back for touchdowns this season. He will be a big key. One more touchdown, folks, and that will be an NCAA record. Also on defense, he lines up at cornerback, and he'll be looking to slow down Roy Williams in the high-flying passing attack of the Texas Longhorns. This will be an outstanding matchup up next to seventh rank Texas Longhorns against the Nebraska Cornhuskers in front of a sellout crowd for 253rd consecutive. They played at Syracuse like Dave Lapham. He's ready. Mac Brown in his fifth year. What a job he's done with his team on the road. Over the last couple of seasons, unbeatable on the road. And his counterpart also in his fifth season. The first trying times for Frank Solich after 19 seasons as an assistant for Tom Osborne. Nebraska won the toss. They have elected to take their option. They defer to the second half. So Josh Brown's going to be kicking it away. Ivan Williams, the running back, and Selvin Young, the true freshman, going back deep. Young out of Houston, and well a hit. It's going to be Young, but he'll stay in the end zone. So Josh Brown doing a good job to take the return game right out of it at the outset. Offensively, the Kia Sarah's starting 11. For the Texas Longhorns, a big guy in the backfield at 6'5", 225 pounds. His numbers so far this season, Chris Sims, and he had a very efficient day last week in their win, 21-10 over Iowa State. Doan, Holloway, Glenn, Dockery, and Scott up front. The skill guys, some of the best in the nation, Benson Williams, B.J. Johnson, Roy Williams, and Brock Edwards to the tight end. So we're ready to go. First and 10, Texas, 7-1 and one record, a number 7 ranking in the BCS poll. And all of a sudden, Nebraska trying to play the role of the spoiler. Movement up front. Well, it looks to me like Nebraska jumped. Brian Bingham. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Ominous beginning for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I think you were on it, Dave. I think it was Bingham who jumped the junior out of Sandy, Utah, the underneath tackle. So first and five to start the game. Benson in the eye, follows Williams, gets to at the most to the 27. It'll be second and three from there. And a little red in the neighborhood. You better believe it when you come to Lincoln, Nebraska. Starting 11 defensively for the Huskers. Their 4-3 is missing Chris Kelsey, first-team All-Big 12-er. Trevor Johnson starts instead. Des Moines Adams second on the team in sacks on the right side. Chanley, Rude, and Williams are the backers. They're strong on the corners. Dewan Gross, who Noxie was just talking about, and Fabian Washington, a true freshman, is on the opposite side with Bullocks and Bland at the safeties. Benson again. Can't bounce off people. No gain. Patrick Cabongo would not let go of the junior from Montreal. And Patrick's got some size to him. Patrick, 6'6", 315 pounds. Look at the athletic ability. Separate from the block and make the play. That's a gold star on the forehead of Cabongo right there. El Cabong. His first season as a starter. He played nine last year as a reserve. So they are fired up. Now can they hold Texas? It was a first and five. Yet all of a sudden is third and about two and a half. Sims first throw of the game. Underneath going for the first down. And he won't get there. The grab made to the 29-yard line. Taking it in. Cedric Benson out of the backfield. Boy, do you believe it? That is a tough D. Well, Demorio Williams made a very, very sure tackle. The junior college linebacker, the best blitzer that Nebraska has, he was tremendous in the flat, making a very, very sure tackle. Three and out for Texas, just what Nebraska wanted. And as you mentioned, jo Joel, three and out after giving up five yards in the first snap by jumping off sides. Bradford will kick it out of bounds, punted away from Dewan Gross, who leads the nation in returns with a 20-yard average. Low line drive down the middle, believe it or not. Gross doesn't call for the fair catch. Didn't have enough room to take it in. That's why you see the flags. Nifty moves across the 40. He's out to the 42. So he didn't have that little halo. Yep. 
Yeah, and the guy that infringed on that halo was Unger, the best cover guy that Texas has got. Michael Unger broke the halo. No relation to Felix, we're told. No, absolutely. But he leads the team in special teams tackles. A little over anxious there. Got inside that two yard halo area that you have to give the buffer to catch the punt. Gross leads the nation, averaging 20 yards per punt return. Does Nebraska just want to decline it, take it at their own 42 with great field position, or give Gross a chance to hit the home run? They're talking it over. It's a 10 yard penalty now. Well, they'll have it a little bit better off then. They'll have it at the 44 instead of the 42 after the mark off. It's a great field position for the Huskers on their first series of the contest. Coming off maybe their best day offensively of the entire season. Scoring 38 down against the Aggies on the road. And that also ended a five game road losing streak last week at AM. They rushed for 381 yards and ran the ball 73 times. Net gentleman right there, Jamal Lord. 30 carries, set a record, most carries by a quarterback in Nebraska history. Darren Diedrich altering it across the 45 to the 47, a gain of close to three for their starting tailback. But we'll see a bunch as Jamal Lord, well, he's averaged 137 yards rushing over the last four games. Not much of a passer, but he's like an extra tailback. Incognito, Erickson, Garrison, Cody, Bill Waltrip up front. Then Diedrich is going to be backed up by a horn. Davies, the fullback. Passerbrock, the wingback. You won't see the wide receivers all that often today. It's Dietrich. He's got more than enough for the first down into the secondary. All the way to the 30, make it the 25. If they can run the ball, it's going to be a long night for Texas. Boy, excellent block by Judd Davies as he worked his way down the football field. He got a nice seal block. An excellent execution by Jamal Lord. Makes the, makes the look. Now he's got Thornton's right here. He's got Thornton in a quandary. He's got his shoulder pad squared in the line of scrimmage. He pitches immediately. Watch Davies seal block inside. He turns back on Derek Johnson, allowing Diedrich to get the extra yards. Nice start from Nebraska. Trips in the backfield. Crewall joining Davies and Diedrich. And just cracking it at Crewall, the 250-pound sophomore out of Scotia, Nebraska. And defensively, third best in total defense of the nation. Redding, he's the standout up front with Tubbs, Wright, Caleb Thornton all the way back from the knee surgery in the offseason. Jackson, boy, Johnson, the linebackers, Johnson, a Butkus Award semifinalist. Basher and Babers, boy, do they have a pair of cornerbacks. And Huff and Pearson are the safeties. Call it second, a little shy of eight. Lord looking to pass, in trouble. This is what he does well. But he can't elude the pressure. Instead of throwing it away, he takes the sack back at the 31. Corey Redding, one of the best rush ends in the nation. Huff got to him early, flushed him out the strong safety, and Redding cleaned up. Well, that makes five sacks for Corey Redding in the last four ball games, counting tonight as the fourth ball game. He has been unbelievable in the last three game stretch. 16 tackles, 11 unassisted, nine for loss, forced to fumble four sacks now he's got five he has been a one-man wrecking crew third and 16 not exactly what Nebraska needed after the 33 yard run and now good protection Lord deep down the middle and almost intercepted the safety coming over they wanted Mark LaFour a true freshman but Dakari Pierce with the free safety read the quarterback perfectly well Dakari Pearson has five interceptions and he almost had his six and you're right Joel he was just looking right at the eyes of Jamal Lord Nice tight spiral over through the receiver. Pearson had the best opportunity at it, but he could only get one hand on it. Got the right hand up, couldn't get the left hand to secure the pig. Josh Brown, seven of nine, five field goals of 40 yards or longer. This would be a season high. A 48 yard attempt trying to give Nebraska the lead. Oh yeah. He's got plenty of foot into it and Nebraska's on the board. So Brown, with the great kickoff to take the return game out. He's an early weapon for the Huskers. A 48-yard field goal. Trying to pull off the upset. Nebraska with the early advantage. They like the college football just a little bit. Only game in town, in fact. 
Josh Brown takes Young out of the return game again. What a great weapon. So first and 10 from the 20 for the second consecutive time for the Longhorns. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. Okay, Joe, I'll tell you what, weather could definitely be a factor in tonight's game. Right now, temperatures in the low 30s. And later tonight, guys, during the fourth quarter, they're expecting possible sleet and snow. So points right now could be hard to come by. That could be a factor. Check this out. Nebraska fans are well prepared, Joe. <laughs> you know, under uh, under uh, Frank Solich, Nebraska's 37 and four when they score first, and they're on the board first tonight. By formation of Williams and Benson, play fake for Sims, and out of the backfield, Ivan Williams bobbles but gets the first down across the 30. He's pushed out by Josh Bullocks. The free safety could grab by Evan Williams. He's a junior from Cleveland, Texas. Don't forget, he was the starter last year at tailback. He's more of a fullback size-wise, but he gave way by midseason to Cedric Benson. And he had 11 knockdown blocks last week against Iowa State, leading the way for Cedric Benson. He is a good receiver out of the backfield, and Texas went to him right away. There's Big Ivan right there. 56% of the time he's found his target as Sims who's throwing on first down. No, he's not right in there Ryan Bingham The junior from Sandy, Utah almost untouched as he shot the gap Yeah, Bingham, uh, I'll tell you what he got off the line of scrimmage very very quickly What a get off and that's what you're that's what you look for is that first step and, and, and that's just that's just knocking a, a, a lineman down on his backside. That's just overpowering. That's called the bull rush. And Bingham was the bull. And he bulled the Texas lineman down to the ground, right on his back. Sims had no chance. So now on second and long, their best catcher out of the backfield, Brett Robin. He's in with a three wide receiver set. They dump it on the screen to Brett Robin. Go on gross. Bulldogs him out of bounds. Man, it's a short game out to the 28 still third and better than 10 coming up Boy, it was set up better than than the results they got Tillman Holloway the offensive lineman got out there in the in the open field and he could not cut gross down to the ground he tried to cut block gross gross hopped right over him and just closing speed got to Robin in a heartbeat so now third and long William stays in the backfield along with Robin they need some protection, the kind of rush that Chris Sims has seen early. And a dead ball foul, a false start coming up. Longhorns weren't set when the snap came. Have to be set for a full second. advantages that, that Nebraska has here at Lincoln is crowd noise and this is an educated crowd they know when to get loud and there's nothing worse than being in a in a must pass situation as an offensive lineman defensive lineman are pinning their ears back to the quarterback and you can't hear your only advantage is a snap count it's taken away it's a uh, tough feeling Oscar's on the longest winning streak in the nation at home 26 straight games Sims moving the pocket Drilling it to his wide out Tony Jeffrey, but he's going to be short of where he needed to go for the first down. Popped out across the 37, short by about four yards. Bullock's getting there in time along with Lornell McPherson. They had the dime package in there. Boy, Nebraska's defense is flying around the football field. You know, as well as the offense ran the ball, they shut Texas A&M down last week running the football. Texas A&M only had 53 yards rushing on 24 attempts, so they dominated both sides of the line of scrimmage in the running game. Oh, I find it hard to believe that the senior from Lufkin, Bradford, would punt it away for Dewan Gross. And now Gross is hit. Flags on the play. Huskers cover the ball, but down there early and making contact for Texas. It was a Dorian McCullough. Was he blocked into him? Because there was a blocker there as well. Now, it didn't look like he gave much space again. Yeah, he, he, he crowded it, but now they're talking it over. The officials are talking it over. Was he blocked into the return man? If he's blocked into him, the flag will be picked up. That's what's being discussed right here. Was, was the, the cover guy blocked into the return man, or did he do it? it what, did his own impetus take him into the return man? That's the discussion. If he was blocked into him, they'll pick it up. If they feel he wasn't, the halo violation will, will go into effect. It'll be another 10-yard penalty. 
Another look. You be the judge on this one. Now, here's the blocker making the contact. And, and let's see how much contact there is. Ooh. No. No. He, he, he went right into him on his own. He invaded, and they're picking it up because the blocker was in the area. They're picking it up. That's the ball. It'll be first down. For Nebraska. As McCullough got into that area again. They call it the halo. Give him enough space to make the catch. Not surprised they've even kicked it in his direction. Against the best of the nation of returning bunts. Seven Texas with the World Series that just concluded a couple of weeks ago, reminding us all an All American for the Nebraska Cornhuskers in baseball. Defensively, the Anaheim Angels as Diedrich carries it across the 30, gets about three on first down. And let's join Jim Knox with our special guest. All right, Joe, here he is, Darren Erstad, first fresh off that World Series victory by the Anaheim Angels. Have you come down to earth yet? I don't think I realize what's happened yet, but. Uh, you know, we had this day marked on the calendar regardless of what happened. I'm just happy I can be back. All right, this game so far, your thoughts, and uh, I know you have to be pleased, but what a, what a career you had in Nebraska as a punter back in the 94 championship game, pinned Miami deep in their own territory. Well, I had the best of both worlds. I got to sit on the sidelines and watch the game and actually go out there and play. It was like a fantasy camp, so our boys are going to roll tonight, so I'm very confident. We're going to let you enjoy the rest of this one. Appreciate the time, Joel. Oh. Oh, see, I love it. Our boys are going to roll tonight. I'm hey. I feel confident. Where's the rally monkey? <laughs> I figured he'd have a rally monkey on his shoulder or something, but I'll tell you, did you see Jamal Lord on that play? Yes. 220-pound quarterback. He's got some power in those legs, and he ran people over. Nebraska is up in the bit tonight. And they've got the true freshman of the game for the first time, David Horn. Go! Oh. Play fake. They're looking for... Is that Horn? Yes, it is. What a move. He's got a first down. This young man has averaged better than 100 a game over the last four. Time for a Dr. Pepper game. All right, Chris. Now, what a day for the Oklahoma Sooners, solidifying their position in the national rankings. Nebraska doing everything right so far. It's the option. Lord, he's got options if he wants them. What a stop. Picks up an extra 10, almost 15 after he stopped on a dime. Nathan Vasher forced him out way too easy this early for Lord and the option attack of Nebraska. Yeah, he's finding all kinds of real estate out there to take advantage of. And look at him stop and start that change of direction. Looks like a slalom skier getting both his edges in the snow. <laughs> and, and he picks up some blocks down the football field. The Nebraska wide receivers are the best blocking group of wide receivers in the country. And I'll tell you, they stay after people. They stalk people down the football field. 59 yards rushing already. Lord calling his own number again. And why not? He just rakes through an ankle tackle. Takes it for another six. Roderick Wright puts him down. A true freshman working up front for Texas. But still big yardage on first down for Lord. Well, it's obvious that the confidence Nebraska got down at College Station last week is carrying over. The way they won the game, who they beat, and where they beat them are all significant. And it's carrying right over and, and home again at Memorial Stadium. David Horn can't get away. Pinched in the backfield by right. Great penetration. Boy, they got a good looking one, don't they? 6'5, 325 pounder. First team high school All American out of A Leaf Hastings High School in the Houston suburbs. And, and he's not a sloppy three and a quarter. I mean, that, that guy is put together. And, and he's only 18 years old. I mean, that's still a pup. Whitley grows up to be a full blown dog. Now you got yourself something serious. So it's a loss for Horn. Back to the 23, a loss of three, and now a third and seven. This drive started back at the 28, and Lord wants to work out of the shotgun and change the play. The audible is called. The pitch on the option to Horn. Look at the speed. The young man from Omaha Central High School, the same high school that only produced Gale Sayers, short of the first down by maybe a yard. A horn rush for 128 yards and four touchdowns last week against Texas A&M. The crowd is saying to Frank Solich, go for it on fourth and one, and he's obliging. He says, uh, we've got momentum, and the field position is good, and my defense is playing very, very sound football. It's time to go for it on fourth and short. And now he brings back the threesome of Crewell, Davies, and Diedrich diving. Don't think short. he got it. Nice well, I don't think Diedrich got it. He is put down by Reed Boyd, the middle linebacker. Boy, that was a torpedo in the air, wasn't it? it He's was, short by about a yard, I believe. And Stevie Lee got some great penetration at defensive tackle. It starts up front. You have to get, get underneath the, the lineman and, and reestablish the line of scrimmage backwards. And 
Derek Johnson does a good job taking on the fullback, and Boyd's there to, to solidify the hit. And look, look, look at the penetration by the Texas Longhorns. Defensive linemen, all shooting gaps. Four white jerseys in Nebraska's backfield. That's where it starts, that penetration that disrupted the play at the line of scrimmage. So now Texas with it for the third time, looking for their first first down of the contest. With 6.05 remaining in the first quarter. Same two soon to the backfield of Benson and Ivan Williams. Benson through traffic. Great power play on first down across the 20 to the 23. So close to six for Cedric Benson. Oh, don't forget the NFL show on Fox Sports Net. And again tomorrow morning. On second and short, Cedric Benson, the sophomore from Midland Lee, shut down by Barrett Rood, the middle linebacker. And he's short of the first down by about two and a half. Oh, Cedric Benson, one of the most heralded to come out of high school in many, many years, already being compared to the Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams, and actually, Dave, ahead of pace wise of where Williams was after 20 games. Well, the thing that doesn't show is yards per carry efficiency, and uh, Cedric Benson has many more carries than Ricky Williams at that stage in those numbers, but the production is outstanding, and when you're comparing it all to a Heisman Trophy winner, that's high compliment. Throwing on third and about three. Quick pop on the slant, plenty of contact, no flag, and it's incomplete for Brock Edwards, the tight end. And Chris Sims really upset. Scott Shanley was there in coverage, and Chris Sims got, thought that Scott Shanley climbed the back. But boy, the Nebraska deep, the reason Frank Solich went for it on fourth and one, he had confidence in his defense if they weren't successful. That defense rewarded him with a one, two, three, and out, and Nebraska gets the ball right back. That's part of the decision-making process is how your defense is playing if you want to go for it or not. It's only a matter of time before Dewan Gross gets a return. Angle kicked this one. Kept it away from Gross. Good idea. Sent it out of bounds. And it's right around the 35-yard line. Nicely done. When all is said and done by Bradford, it'll be right at the 34. But serious field position again for Nebraska. Dominating early, but only up on. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers running a little gadget play. Will it work? Slowing down. Mark LaFleur. Good job. Out of the backfield. Lee Jackson was all over it. Lee Jackson yes, was not a strong cool. side backer. Pursued it well. Got help from Michael Huff. Well, this was late yesterday. This was the day before meal for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And you know what? That's usually ours, but we were good about it. We gave it up to the Huskers. Look at these groceries now. That was the beef tenderloin that you saw. They also had pork loin, 100 pounds of rotisserie chicken, orange roughy, a little fish, a little pasta. Full salad bar, frozen, you know, not much on the desserts. You know, if you have a sweet tooth, you suffer. Boy, what, what a meal. Lord running it himself after the big loss on the gadget play. Reed Wright right, pulls him down short of where they started originally at the 34. He gets it out past the 32-yard line. So Nebraska has only tried one pass so far. And we've played close to 12 minutes of the contest. This is the third possession for the Cornhuskers. They've enjoyed great field position now. Well, the third best defense in the nation. Texas comes in. Number three in total defense. Third in scoring defense, giving only 13 points a game. Can they get them to go three and out for the first time tonight? How about this? Four receivers for Nebraska. Four wides. And no quarterback draw. Lord, low percentage play. Falls incomplete. Now, I thought they were spreading them for the quarterback draw. Draw. Ben Cornelson was the closest one, the senior from Shawnee, Kansas, but Cedric Griffin was on top of him, the nickelback. And Lord had room to run. Yeah, I think he did too, but I, I think they have a tremendous amount of respect for the Texas team speed and their ability to rally to the football. And third and 11, you don't, if you're Nebraska in their style of offense, you don't want to be third and 11. First punt for Kyle Larson as Nathan Basher. Another great return man, one of the best in the nation. He is waiting for the Longhorns, a junior from Texarkana, Texas. And Texas should get, barring a turnover, their best field position to start a drive tonight. Yeah, Vasher's averaging over 12 yards per punt return himself. Get close to Larson, who wobbles it out off the side of his foot, and great field position. It's out of bounds right around the 40 yard line. I think you might have holding on Nebraska. I think somebody held up the middle as Texas put a rush up the middle, and I think I think the Texas will decline it because they're going to have good field position anyway, and the hold is called up the gut, and, and I don't know the, the Texas. I wonder if they'll make I wonder if they'll make them re-kick it or if they like this field position because wasn't that good a punt? 
If they decline it, they'll have the ball at the 37-yard line. So it's three nothing to lead for Nebraska on the 48-yard field goal by Josh Brown. They're going to make him re-kick it. And, and a lot of pressure on the center to snap the football and then block. And I think Holding. the center held up the gut. On a kicking team. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Well, the heat came, as you mentioned, right up the middle. So the hold definitely was up the middle. It wasn't from the perimeter. Right. And, and, and that is, that's tough duty. I mean, you got your head down, you're snapping the football, then you have to get your head back up and, and make contact and, and block a, a rush guy legally. And I think there was a little reach and hook going on by the deep snapper. And let's see if Larson, remember where that ball was spotted. Let's see if this, if, let's see what field position they end up with here. I'm not sure. It's good moving on. We'll see. Both coaches have so much confidence in their special teams. It's not a shock that they would go after it again. Larson now sends out a beauty. Fair catch called for. Man, it's about a 10 yard difference. Yep. Asher takes it close to the 27, 26 call it. So it's a minus 11 in the exchange for Texas. Yeah, that was a bad and punt. Much better protection up the middle. Yeah, Larson missed hit. Give him a second chance. He made good. So 49 yard punt. Bowl in the Catholics from Boston beat Notre Dame. <laughs> from the 26. First and 10. Sims throwing on first down. Roy Williams, big cushion. Nice moves into the secondary. He's got it across the 40 to the 42. Jeez, the junior from Odessa, he's fun to watch after the catch. What a specimen. 6'4, 210 pounds. And in high school, he won the state championship in the, in the high jump, long jump. 100 meters. He was a one-man track team, and you can see the unbelievable. He's a genetic phenomenon. He really is. First down. So throw it on first down certainly paid off, especially with the easy look on the outside. Say, why not? Let's do it again. Because he had the big cushion on Fabian Washington, the true freshman. He's got to be six, seven yards off the line of scrimmage and Roy Williams. Well, Fabian Washington is playing man coverage, but he's covering a heck of a man. <laughs> and I mean, Fabian Washington is six feet, 170 pounds. Pitch and catch, isn't it? Yeah, and this is a true freshman. Six feet, 175 pounds will give Roy Williams six four, two ten. It's kind of a, a mismatch in size and speed ratio. The Longhorns, the last team. The beat Nebraska at Memorial Stadium. Nebraska's won 73 of 74 at home. Nebraska was offside, no flag. Williams again, victimizing Washington. He's got a first and 10 to the 18-yard line on a deep post. Well, in, in Roy Williams tonight, there was concern about that hamstring. Well, it looks like it's pretty good because it's in the 30s. Temperature's in the 30s. That's not conducive for a guy that's got a hamstring problem. He's running pretty freely right now. Sloan Thomas. He's probably not going to be able to take many snaps tonight. His hamstrings are worse shape, but he can inside Fabian Washington again. And it's the Roy Williams drive going on right now. Three consecutive catches. They double up the wide receivers on the near side. Williams gets a break. They'll run it with Benson up the middle, and Cedric cracks it inside the 15 down to the 14, where he's met by Demorio Williams, a weak side backer. Good yardage, though, about four, four yards on first down for Benson man, it was tough for the sophomore as you remember on that first series they couldn't get five yards on three snaps Benson always gets that pad level low very rarely does he get knocked backwards you know when he's tackled for loss it's because of penetration and look at look at the splits the Texas offensive linemen are taking they started taking bigger splits against Iowa State giving bigger lanes for Cedric Benson second and six on the toss sweep Benson will turn the corner got it around Des Moines Adams still Adams holding on gross said he took his hands and the, and the referee said no he was already out of bounds it was on the sideline but Adams comes up limping yeah so that's a big blow because they're already missing their second team all big 12 selection last year Chris Kelsey he's still bothered by the hamstring that's a fourth straight game he's missed Dave so they start Trevor Johnson on one side inexperienced junior and Adams now is going to go over to the bench and, and on that play and Adams looks like he's grabbing his hamstring and, and I'll tell you, it's, it's tough to get loose in this kind of weather. And they ran a fake th they dive, a fake dive, and pitched the ball to Benson to the short side of the field. And he outran Nebraska's defense. First and goal, Texas outside of the seven. Little play fake for Chris Sims, buying some time. Uh -oh. Almost intercepted, jumping the route perfectly. Josh Bullocks, he read it better than the receiver. He did. He did everything but catch the football, and that's the most important thing. His route recognition was extraordinary. He broke on the ball, but he did not catch it. Great blitz pickup by Benson. Takes the defender to the ground. And 
Chris Sims staring in at that receiver, and, and I'll tell you, the better position was uh, Bullock's. And that, that, that one, he'd like to have that one again because that hit him right between the two and the zero, and Chris Sims dots a bullet right there. Williams in the game over to the near side. It is B.J. Johnson. Short side, Roy Williams in the eye on second and goal. Benson and battled his way just to get the handoff. Deep in the backfield, Justin Smith. Smith, a senior from Sherman, Texas, who had four sacks last year. He's now pressed into duty on the edge because of the injuries. And great red zone defense by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. It's all about attitude and desire when you're down here on a short field. And Nebraska's really flying around the football field right now. And, and this is where you might think about going back to Roy Williams, get that matchup on the, on the much smaller, shorter Fabian Washington, and, and try to go over the top a little bit of a fade. They have the matchup at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the screen. Chris Sims calls timeout. And they had the matchup. They had Roy Williams matched up on Fabian Washington. Watch for the fade. So in the final 30 seconds of the first quarter, Texas using their first timeout of the half. So a chip shot field goal, but they'll try to get into the end zone on third and goal from outside of the eight. Kansas State, State in Manhattan, we had a defensive battle. And I expected the same type of thing tonight in the end of the first quarter. We only have 24 seconds to go. It has been exactly that. Big plays are hard to come by. I mean, you're battling, scratching, clawing for every yard you possibly can. And red zone defense has been extraordinary for both defenses have bent, but not broken. That was a great game, a 17-14 win that you're talking about, Dave, on the road in Manhattan, the 11th consecutive road victory. So here are the offensive keys, according to Greg Davis, their offensive coordinator. And handling the environment means the crowd noise. And when you get Roy Williams and company one-on-one, -on -one, they got to make plays and try to get that running game to take over and, and settle everything down. I still say, watch this matchup, Washington, on Roy Williams, Fabian Washington, Roy Williams. Watch the fade over in this corner of the end zone as an option. They've got Johnson along with Tony Jeffrey on the opposite side. Jeffrey, the slot man. Third and goal outside of the eight. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Sims rush, fires back in the end zone out of the reach of B.J. Johnson. Boy, nice pressure on, on Chris Sims. And they're going to have to settle for a field goal opportunity to tie this football game. Nebraska's defense is healthy. Chris Sims staring down that, that primary target once again, not really looking, uh, scanning the field for, for other options. He had a pre-snap uh, decision in his mind. He was going to go to B.J., and he went there. And he went there unsuccessfully. B.J. Johnson could not corral the ball at the back of the goal line. It's going to be a 25-yard attempt for the former walk-on Dusty Magnum to tie it up, yes. flag into the air. It's perfect. Yeah, let's find out about the flag. When Nebraska came off the edge pretty hard, did he get a hold here? Offside. So the on the defense. Penalty yeah, declined. Points on the board. So long drive stalls on first and goal at the seventh. It's still a 25-yard field goal. And it's all even at, it's all even at three after the field goal by Mangum. Got a very short kickoff. Josh Davis running up at the 15, across the 20. Great return to the 35, making the 39-yard line. He's near the 40, so again, Nebraska should be up by more than three. They've had it at their own 40 the last time, their own 34. First time they had it, they started their own 44. Uh, look at the field position now. Texas goes 66 yards in nine plays and has to settle for a field goal because they were backed up. Field position in a defensive contest is so key. Where the average drive start is, I'm getting old, Joel. I played with Davis's dad, Tough Tony Davis, teammate of mine with the Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals. Here's his son playing for Nebraska, just like Tough Tony did. It'll be a slight delay to David Horn. He's ripped down immediately by Michael Huff, the strong safety, and that is going to be the final snap of very entertaining, and as Dave mentioned, a defensive battle in the first quarter of two heavyweights, Nebraska and Texas. At the end of the first quarter, it's all even at three. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Sarah on Fox Sports. Quarter. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. It is the largest crowd in the history of Memorial Stadium. The 253rd consecutive sellout. And on the first half, the deflection oh. and the interception. Coming up with the pick, it's Nathan Vasher as Lord tried to throw it. 
on the first snap of the second quarter, and Corey Redding got yep. his hand up in time. He did. Corey Redding got the deflection. Vasher got the pick. Big play. And coming into this football game, Nebraska was minus four in the minus four in the turnover department overall. Texas was plus seven. Corey Redding tries to make the interception. It's a zone blitz. He's dropped back into coverage. And there's no way Lord thought that Redding was even going to be in that area. He didn't quite control it, but Vasher did. The old tip drill you work on every day in practice, and Vasher finalized the tip as Corey Redding could not squeeze it. But that zone blitz, dropping him off in the coverage, really fooled Jamal Lord. Best field position to start a drive for the Longhorns at the 48. Couple of play fakes. Sims looking deep downfield. Almost a great grab by Benson. Did he come up? No. It was there, then off his pads as T.J. Hollowell, the outside backer, was trying to keep up with him. Yep. Another native Texan. That was a good matchup uh, in, in Texas's opinion to get their running back on linebacker and, and just off his fingertips. Can't throw it any better than that. Benson just can't quite make the catch, but Sims laid it out there perfectly and, and almost hit Benson in stride. So second and 10, out across the 48. After the pick. Looking underneath, Roy Williams working on Dewan Gross, and he's got a first down to the 35 yard line of Nebraska. Time for another Dr. Pepper game break. What's the latest, Chris Rose? A little scare there by Rutgers, but Miami's got too much firepower. Roy Williams, four catches already, Dave, 73 yards. Moving up front, free down for Chris Sims. Uh, I think Texas may have moved because they froze it. But I'll tell you, Roy Williams is a man tonight. Tough matchup for the cornerbacks for Nebraska. Offside. There was contact. Good call. Let's check in once again with Jim Knox. Knox. And he tweaked his hamstring, trying to work it out, trying to stretch it out. So right now, Nebraska playing without their starting defensive end. Now that's two starting defensive ends out now with Chris Kelsey also gone. I'll tell you what, when I see trainers doing that, it's like make a wish. Gosh, <laughs> those guys are flexible. If they did that to me now, are you kidding me? Yeah. I wouldn't be able to walk for three months. Well, you'd be in traction for a while. Oh, it'd be ugly. We'd visit you in the hospital, though. Uh, that's nice of you guys. First and five. Benson waiting for the pursuit to slide by, oh, but they guys. still... Get him after a gain of three. It's Gabongo in on the hit. Now, they have had significant injuries up front. Jason Lohr, he was gone for the entire year. Tore the ACL before the season began. And he was out last year as well. He's been, uh, he's had real, real injury problems during his career. And Chris Kelsey, projected first round draft pick in the NFL's defensive end, has been out four games. This is his fifth. Benson again needs two for the first down, takes the pile, and I think he's got enough. Yes, just across the 25. Hollowell tried to stop the play, the weak side backer. Boy. It'll be a first and 10 for the Longhorns. So the Longhorns trying to establish a ground game because Nebraska's already got the ground game. Well, the passing game's there for Chris Sims. He's 8 of 12 so far. 8 of 12 for 103 yards. Now they need some balance. You know, it's funny, he's been kind of a quiet 8 of 12, isn't he? And, and, and one of the drops, Benson could have had a big play down the sideline after the uh, after the turnover. But boy, did Benson finish that run. He pushed the pile big time. He's only averaging, though, three yards per pop. Nine carries for 27 yards. Now a first and 10 inside the 25 of the Huskers. They pick up the blitz, a little chip. And Sims time into the end zone, off the fingertips. He was trying to get it to B.J. Johnson. That little chip, though, in the backfield, a huge one for Chris Sims. And what a great spin move by Chris Sims to spin away from Barrett Rude. Take a look at uh, this is uh, as as we speak. Colorado lost uh, lost in the conference today, four and one now. And here's Nebraska still alive. I mean, this is a huge game. No, look at it. nobody's out of it. Nobody's out of it out of, on these four teams. Everybody's got a shot to win the Big 12. North and taking a look at the South Texas and Oklahoma still in the dog fight. And how about Oklahoma State? Another big win. Texas ain't in. They knocked them off today. Second and ten for Sims and the Longhorns. Double move. Corner of the end zone. Man available. 
too tall for Roy Williams as the safety finally got over there Pat Ricketts the extra defensive back I do like the action with the double move of the pump yep and uh, and really Chris Sims in, in cold weather you have to have a big hand to control the football as well as Chris Sims is and he has a huge mucker and the double move the pump fake got it and, and Roy Williams just could not quite balance himself up to go airborne Fabian Washington was the cornerback underneath him over the top as you described Joe came Pat Ricketts a little cover two. So two straight misses after the first down and now third and ten. They spread the defense with three wide receivers two to the wide side of the field. Sims out of the gun. They pick up the blitz. Pocket holds up at the five. What a Man. bullet. But Robert Timmons could not hang on the true freshman from Flower Mound Texas Bland was coming over he knew he was going to get a hit yep. and he pulled those arms back in well in the shotgun Texas has not been in the shotgun since the Cotton Bowl in January of 2000 and Chris Sims throws a rocket out of the shotgun and hits uh, his receiver right in the hands you can't throw the football any better than he did to Robert Timmons Timmons could not quite come up with it but Texas in the shotgun for the first time since Major Applewhite got hurt in the Cotton Bowl. Mangum tries to give the Horns their first lead from 41 yards away, and he's got it. He is two for two from 25, and now from 41, there is a flag down to the play. Now we have running into the kicker. You take points off the board because it's fourth and 10. Running into is not automatic. That's five yards. Roughing is 15. I'm not sure you take points off the board here. Interesting call. Have running it into the kicker, a five-yard penalty. So it's uh, you know now the decision's Mac Brown. You say, do I take the field goal and keep the points on the board, or do you take it off? And he declines it. He said, I want the points. Put on the points. Easy decision for Mac Brown. So Texas, after trailing four minutes into the game, now has their first lead. Close to two minutes gone by in the second for 17 of the nation with a 7 and 1 record so far on our subway game summary. Roy Williams, the catalyst, it's through the air. It's not on the ground. Only 20 yards on the ground on 10 carries for Texas. As Dusty Mangum will kick it away to Josh Davis, the junior from Loveland, Colorado. Nebraska winning the hidden yards so far, Joel. They have a 10 yard advantage in average drive start in like four or five possessions. That's half the football field, big in a defensive struggle. And actually, Richmond McGee with the kickoff duty is doing a good job. We've seen him before. At K State, he took the return game out of it and does it again. So Nebraska with their worst field position to start a drive back at their own 20. And time now for our Dr. Pepper trivia. Well, Texas, the last team to win in Lincoln in the past 74. What about the last team before Texas to win here I'll give you a in hint. Husker territory? They won the national championship. That's a, that's a hint. I'll also give you the year for another hint. 1991. I got more hints, but I'm not going to give it away. Well, I'll tell you something. Don't get a little huskyish on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> David Horn. <laughs> John Davies. Comprising the backfield as Lord runs the option in decision, but still he gets five yards on first down. So they look at Lord, say, we'll let you beat us. Back to that win in 1998. Major Applewhite, the quarterback, of a touchdown pass. 16 yards to Derek Lewis. Good day for Ricky Williams as well. Yeah, he had 150 yards rushing. He did. He rushed for 150, and the fans were chanting Heisman, Heisman for him. The Nebraska fans were at the end of the game. Major Applewhite, two touchdown passes. That was he, the big one to Wayne McGarity. He threw 14. He completed 14 to 26 for 269 yards. Very big day for Major. Halloween nights. 1998 and now setting up the screen Nebraska had room and boy great pursuit down the line as they take care of LaFleur again the true freshman out of Omaha Central Rod Babers read it perfectly just weaved his way through the blockers he did in, in that team speed I mean Nebraska, uh, Texas has got speed everywhere defensively as does Nebraska boy Texas they've got uh, um, they've got a like, track team oh, it's, it, it's like it is it's like a it's like a uh, 400 meter relay team out there for football team big third down now third and a deuce and Dietrich nope. won't get there nope Darren Dietrich stopped again well Texas has the lead in points off a turnover the only turnover of the game and now all of a sudden the number three defense in the nation starting to pick up the pace and, and they've really made some nice adjustments uh, in, in defending the option 
the first series or two, Jamal Lord was running free. And now the yards are very, very difficult to come by. Carl Reese and his defensive staff have made great adjustments, and they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Are you going to get in the way of Stevie Lee at 6'4", 320? Stevie Lee, I'll tell you, he likes he likes uh, training table. Basher waits for the punt, and this is a returnable type. Can he make the first man miss? Yes, he does. Goes out of bounds across the 40, so again, great field position for Texas the at their own 41 after starting the last drive after the turnover at their own 48. And the cover guy was Gross. Gross not only returns punts, he's he's one of the best cover guys for Nebraska covering punts, and, and Basher and Gross matched up right there. It is the largest crowd in the history of Memorial Stadium. How about that? 35 degrees at kickoff. They're talking about freezing rain later tonight. Could turn to snow. So, you know, that'll, that'll keep you warm. But I got a feeling a lot of people came with plenty of antifreeze in them before yeah. they ever arrived at the game. You're going to knock the ice off that pizza. <laughs> Benson and Ivan Williams in the backfield. And Sims with a dead ball foul coming up. He yeah. had success the last two drives, throwing on first down. Don't move early. Don't get out of that two-point stance before the snap of the football. Ball, ball. Ball start. That cost a five. Left that, tackle. That crowd noise is, uh, is tough. In, in, in Texas trying to throw the ball on first down, a little contrarian thinking in the play calling, and, and it backfired. Well, Greg Davis told us, the offensive coordinator, that they had been working this week with the, the speakers on and a lot of crowd noise during their practices because they knew they were going to have to deal with it. But there's nothing like, you know, when the red light is on and, and Nebraska's flying all over the football field and you have all these people screaming, it's different. You can't simulate it in practice. You can try, but it's not the same. Two to the same side, the wide side, and Benson coming out of the backfield. On first and 15, a delay. Ivan Williams trying to run left with the ball in his right hand. It just looked slow, didn't it? Like Kevin Smith, the redshirt freshman out of Macon, Georgia, making the stop. Oh, this week it's a doubleheader on Fox NFL Sunday. It all starts with a... Now a second and long after a gain of only a yard. Sims on the deep drop. Underneath, Benson can't hang on. It was thrown behind him. And it's going to bring up third and a long way to go. Chris Sims telling uh, Benson it's my fault. I threw the ball behind you. I was expecting a little bit move, a different move out of that pivot route than you gave me. Well, when you when you uh, jump off sides to start the drive, you're off schedule. First and 15 against a quality defense is tough. Now you find yourself third and about a long 14 or a short 15. An 11-game road winning streak on the line. For the Longhorns, how many teams can say they've won 11 straight on the road and 15 of their last 17 outside of Austin under Mac Brown as Sims wants a timeout. Right, that's not counting the neutral sites. That's the uh, that's on the road, not neutral sites. We'll come back and find out what the Horns do on third and 14, leading by three. Has a field goal lead over Nebraska. A couple of field goals. The difference right now. And our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Player of the Week while we're watching him. He's been shut down on the ground, though, so far by Nebraska. That's Cedric Benson running for 199 yards last week in a win over Iowa State. A couple of scores. He is a sensational kid out of Midland Lee. And now Sims on third and 14. Comeback and turning late and making the catch anyway. What a grab by Tony Jeffrey. Made it look like, ah, piece of cake, the sophomore from Houston. But, boy. That ball was 75% of the way there when he turned around, Dave. It, it was a heat-seeking missile, there's no doubt. And, and here, here's the NFL arm strength people are talking about. I mean, he sets in that pocket, transfers his weight, follows through, and throws a frozen rope. I mean, you can hang your clothes on that line and go through the car wash and not get wet, man. He can fire the pill. So they convert out of the timeout on third and 14. Only one timeout left in the half for Texas, leading by three in Nebraska territory. Nice waggle. Move the pocket. Dump it off. It's Ivan Williams. Big yardage. He's out of bounds. But good yardage on first down. Just moving the pocket. Sim shows some decent mobility for a guy his size. Well, that's the thing. He's not a stiff back there. I mean, he's an athlete. You know, he may not run a 4-5-40, but he's got escapability and elusiveness to him and athleticism. And the passing game's trying to set up the running game tonight for Texas. You know, this Nebraska defense putting eight in the box and limiting the running opportunities. But Chris Sims has thrown the ball effectively enough where if he keeps loosening the Nebraska up, eventually Benson will hit some creases. In the eye formation, Benson with the lean, but only two on the carry. And to the 32, it'll be second and eight. 
FedEx numbers so far. And there you see the disparity as Texas has not been able to run the football so far. And Nebraska has not been able to throw it. No surprise there. Both neither team balanced yet in terms of productivity. And Texas has got better than the half football field advantage in yards. And as a result, they've got that three point lead in a defensive battle. Benson joined by Will Matthews, a sophomore from Westwood High School in Austin for the first time. He's the up back. Second and eight. Short drop this time of the Oop. cushion, but fell down. BJ fell down. Johnson, the wide receiver, just slipped on the artificial surface here in Lincoln. Now there is moisture in the air. The humidity at the start of the game, about 70, 75 percent. They're talking about freezing rain. So it could start to get a little moist on the surface. There on the other side, Roy Williams running his route and saying, he, he, I stayed up in my feet, Chris. You should have come to this side, but this field turf. Nebraska is 25 and 0 on the field turf since they've uh, installed it and you're right the, the humidity the damp cold you know humidity makes it feel hotter when it's hot it makes it feel colder when it's cold as well it gets right to your bones third and eight they have moved the pocket again for Chris Sims rifling on the run grab made and not enough for the first down from Tony Jeffrey so he's short of the first down but it is manageable now for Dusty Mangum before it was going to be close to a 50 yarder It'll be in the neighborhood of about 45 yards on the field goal try. Yeah, you, you certainly don't want to punt it. You get no advantage if the ball goes in the end zone there. It's kind of long to go for it, fourth and four. But now you got to make Mangum's got to make sure that he gets elevation, proper elevation, because if you drive this ball, if you hit it with the three iron, not your nine iron, it's blockable by Nebraska. He's got to get the ball up. Texas trying to extend the lead to six. Mangum. Did he hook it? Too much. Just outside the upright. So a missed 45-yard field goal attempt by Dusty Mangum. Wish the draw of mine off the first tee had that little bit of a hook. Yeah, really. It barely moved. It started right at the post and then slipped outside. Sure did. A little draw like that will get you extra yards off the tee, though, my friend. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, Dave, we were just talking about our Dr. Pepper trivia, the last team. Besides, and now Nebraska has taken 73 of the last 74. You talked about the national championship season for yep. Don James and the Washington Huskies. Steve Entman, and uh, what a great college defensive lineman he was. Injuries in the NFL in his career with the Colts ended his career prematurely, but defensive dominator. Deontay Grigsby, the running back, but it's going to be Lord calling his own number again. Efficiently with a first down outside to the 40-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, when he gets out on the perimeter, defensive players say, Lord, have mercy. Because this guy, man, he is something else when he when he turns his up the football field and squares those shoulder pads up. And he's got he's got Davis available for the pitch, fakes the pitch, and, and extends the defense. Nice blocking down the football field once again by the wide receivers and hustling offensive linemen, but Clem did a great job down the field. Nebraska's wideouts are the best blocking group in the country. Lord running the option again. Boy, does he have a lane. Big yardage for Lord. And he's spun out of bounds at the 38. It's crazy. You know he's not going to throw it. I mean, he's only hit 51% of his passes over the first nine games, and he's barely averaged 10 to 12 passes per game. But still, he gets it done. And, and really, watch the motion man and watch the watch the uh, blocking that occurs here up front. He's the pitch. The relationship's there. But Lord turns it up. And look at this lane. Are you kidding me? Look at the blocking right here back inside. Look at the blocking down the football field sustaining. I'll tell you, boy, Lord is, uh, he's got some acceleration. He's got a burst. Dietrich's best run. And an ankle tackle. Out of the secondary by Pearson saves a huge gain as he's got it to the 31 yard line. So Darren Dietrich coming off his best game so far this season with 85 yards on 15 carries last week at AM. Look, looks like a low hurdler here. Just get over the low hurdle and now he busts it to the outside and the ankle tackle. Taken down by Dakari Pearson. And you know, they both got up and hit each other on the helmet, tapped each other. A lot of respect, mutual respect by both of these football teams and both of these coaching staffs. Back to the threesome. They set up in that power eye. Where are you going? Strong side, the right side. It'll be Dietrich up the middle. And he is throttled. Falls forward for yard. Derek Johnson, we haven't called this number, have we? No. He's a Butkus Award semifinalist, the weak side linebacker. 
He's a big playmaker. He comes up with one there, but still it's going to be third in the yard. And now, you know, if you don't get it on this third and one, what do you, you got to think ahead? What do you do on fourth down if you're short, depending on how short you are? But you're hopefully successful here, but you have to think ahead. If you're not, what are you going to do on fourth down? Davies and Dietrich in the eye. They give it to Davies. He doesn't get it. Nope. He is shut down just inside the 29. Shy of where he needed to go, the 28. Kevin Thornton did a good job just to hold on. Now, do you, do you try to go for a long field goal to tie it up? But last time you went for it on fourth down, it was unsuccessful. That's equivalent to a turnover in the short side of the field. And, and really, Davies tripped over his quarterback, Lord, on the exchange and, and the penetration again by Texas' defensive line in these short yardage situations is extraordinary. And that's going to be one of the factors going through Frank Solich's mind right now. They've been really doing a job penetrating on short yardage. Do I go for it or do I go for the long field goal to tie it up? They've already got a 48 yard field goal. There are only points of the night from Josh Brown. But a timeout is the first used by Nebraska. We're by college but rewarded him with a one two three and out and got the ball right back So I guess he's gonna be thinking about that again, you know do, my defense is playing real well Do I go for it? And, and if it's not successful does my defense get it right back to me? This guy this guy is uh, he's enthusiastic about that I'll number one isn't he? Somebody pinch him and make sure he is still breathing. I think he was hypnotized. Well, I don't or is he frozen? That could is he be. just frozen solid? It could be you're gonna have to chip some ice off him. Hey, well, Jim Knox was close to that situation. They're gonna run the, you know, run the option, or they, they're gonna run the power eye. They get the power eye. It's gonna be an ISO. Two lead blockers, ISO. Or will it be a fake and a little naked action from Jamal Lord on the edge? Option. Option all the way. Lord won't get there. Great pursuit. Boy, Derek Johnson. Yes, strong. he got him up top. Yep. But down low, coming through the big play made by Michael Huff, the strong safety. Boy, he did. He came in there low too. And, and, and boy, they're going to measure it. They're going to have to bring it in. And they got a close? great spot if it's that close because it looked like he was outside of the 29. But Huff just did a great job. He made a decision right away. Forget the pitch. I'm going right for the quarterback. And, and Lord, though, he, he fell forward pretty pretty well. He's, he's, you know, he's got some size to him. I still think he's short, though, just by a skosh. He's got it. I want to sell you some land in Florida. Is he, uh, is, is it a credit card short? You know, can you slide a credit card through there? I mean, it's. Got to be short. By a half a yard, or a good yard. So Nebraska fails for the second time tonight on fourth down. It was on their second series of the game. The first time it happened, it was fourth and one at the Texas 17. Boy, Huff the safety played like Huff the linebacker. Sam Huff of years past, the way he filled that that lane in the option. Man, did he make a quick decision and get after Lord? Let's see if Nebraska's defense rises up like they did the last time, or if Texas can go on a sustained drive with some momentum. So an interesting call. Despite the fact that Josh Brown hit a 48-yarder and had enough for 50 plus, they did not go for the 45-yard field goal attempt. First and ten long ones. Now can they find some balance? Well, they'll keep it up top, and why not? Roy Williams with his fifth grab of the game. He had four for 73 before that catch for a first down. He had gross and man coverage and, and just got inside. Just in 10 Texas, their own 43 yard line, leading by three. The dump off, it's Ivan Williams. Let him slide, he does. Good nifty move for a lot of yards, and then he pancaked Philip Bland. Give me a break. <laughs> Ivan, Ivan the, Ivan the magician, Ivan the monster. Ivan, Ivan just was was huge on that play, and T.J. Hollowell is the guy that missed. He just makes T.J. Hollowell miss on the sideline. He picks up about five, six, seven, eight. Oh man, that that is a pancake. Throw some syrup down there. <laughs> I mean, that's like Bland is Bland's not Bland. That's spicy. Ooh, that's hot. He's on his back. Butter didn't have a chance to melt. Man, Benson in the backfield, first and ten at the forty. Again, Sims with Roy Williams, a cushion that time in front of Dewan Gross. So Roy Williams pretty much just having it his way. He's already close to 100 yards receiving. That's his sixth grab, but still no balance from the Longhorns. And Roy Williams' hamstring must feel a lot better because the temperature's the way it is, and when you have a hamstring problem, it's impossible to loosen it. 
under these kind of climate conditions. And look at that. He's almost at 100 yards. Six catches for 93. About well, 186 yards for Texas and 163 of those through the air. Now second and five for the 35. Trying to check at the line of scrimmage. Crowd is intelligent, making noise. Sims in trouble, and he's down. Rude. Yes, Barrett Rude, the middle linebacker, the sophomore, who went to high school right here in Lincoln, and he played in every game the last year as a true freshman. Well, I played with his dad as well. Man, <laughs> here comes Rudy Ray. That's what we used to call his old man. And Rudy Ray comes clean, and, and that's just a that's just a breakdown. I nice. mean, he, he's not even touched. It's nice we could be here as a part of this reunion for you. I'm telling you, boy, and, and both their dads played at Nebraska, and the sons come. I mean, there's a lot of father-son combinations that play, played here for the Cornhuskers. Tom Rude was Barrett's dad and a great player, number one pick in the NFL. Third and 15. Will Sims have enough time? On the out, oh. just off the hands of Roy Williams, and it was. That was a fastball from Chris Sims. Gross was beaten. On the quick out. And watch the route. Look, look at the size speed ratio that Roy Williams has got. Separation, getting in and out of his cuts. Guy's 6'4, 210 pounds. Just a little bit tall because of the velocity of, on the football from Chris Sims. Gross weights back it around the 10 with a punt from Bradford into the end zone. And Nebraska will have it when we come back first and 10 at their own 20. Three point lead for the Longhorns. We'll send it back to ah! Grixby in the backfield. He'll carry it, but he won't get much. Somebody kicked this shoe for the Longhorns as well. Yes. A yard for Deontay Grixby. And while we were away, How about this? Of yes. Graduate with us at and game. right here, Ken Fouts. Actually, Ken Fouts is underneath Memorial Stadium in the Fox Sports television truck where he is working as the producer of tonight's broadcast. Ken Bounds is one of the leaders in the network sports television industry. A native of Bellevue, Ken began his career at KOLN TV in Lincoln and has worked on the national level for NBC, ABC, and now Fox Sports. Bounds is retiring following this season. Let's congratulate Ken Bounds. Congratulations yes. to a great man. You said it. We congratulate our director, Kenny Fouts, who was honored tonight just a few minutes ago oh, while we were oh. away as Lord takes it to the 28-yard line. But well-deserved recognition for Ken Fouts, who now I know why, he, why he's such a homer, native of Bellevue. There you go. Noxie, you're on the sideline. You know what, Joel? A lot of the Nebraska X's coming to this game. Neil Smith, Roger Thomas on hand, and Neil has something to say. Hey, congratulations, Ken Fouts. Hey, everybody knows Ken Fouts How about here in that? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> How about that? And, and you know what? Well, I'll, I'll get to that after this play here, but i got to say something about our man. Third and a couple at the 28 yard line lord looking for the option well not a bad move his himself into the secondary and will he go the distance chase down inside the 35 of the 30 yard line huff save the touchdown with the help of babers well that's the change of direction that turner gill was talking about a 220 pound guy that can stop on a dime and change direction incredible effort by lord and once again lord have mercy because he's on the edge and he's making people miss. Whoops! Away we go right there. I mean, that's just absolutely throws Lee Jackson. Then it's off to the races before Huff and Babers can corral him. Horns in the backfield, along with Judd Davies. And will somebody else hold it? No. Chasing down. The quarterback, Jamal Lord, is Roderick Wright. And what a start in this half for Roderick Wright. He has been involved in so many plays up front for Texas. Tackles for loss. And one quick comment on our on our guy, our good friend, Ken Fouts. Here's a guy, Olympic experience, Monday night football. I mean, big, big, big time. And, you know, he's as humble. I mean, he's just as good a guy as you're going to meet. It never went to his head. And I'll tell you, he's a, he's a great example for everybody in the broadcast business. I'll tell you that. And he stuck with us. Yeah, yeah, no, it's hard to believe. And what a hit on Lord. That's our man, Roderick Wright. Right again, just shooting the gap on cue. And we remind you, he's just out of high school, out of A. Lee Hastings in Houston. Yeah, he doesn't know what he doesn't know yet. Wait till he knows what he's supposed to know. I mean, this guy is is a special, special athlete. And, and it's called get off, take off. And, and, and Roderick Wright, he just. Beat the offensive tackle inside. 
The right tackle tried to take his set and take away the inside, and Wright just came flying down inside of Billy Waldrop. So now third, and close to 17. Outside of the 36, Nebraska's got to make it one as they use their second. So one left for both Texas and Nebraska with inside of two minutes to play in the first half. And it is similar. You brought up a good point when you talked about Kansas State. Kansas State and Texas, two good defensive units, and they're outshining the offensive units. Oh, we caught up earlier with Frank Soldich, the Cornhuskers head coach. Their motto going into the season was start strong, finish stronger. They didn't start as strong as they wanted to, but they're hoping to finish very, very strong, as are all the fans at Memorial Stadium. This is after tonight. Yes, three games remaining. Kansas State and Colorado to finish it off. You, know, you, can't, you can't assume anything, but you'd have to think that they can knock Kansas off with a couple of couple of battles down the stretch. Kansas had a tough day today, didn't they? Yes, they did. Kansas Lord State now did. on third and 16 with a screen pass to the receiver. Low floor. Belted pretty good near the 30-yard line, but it'll be a long field goal try coming up for Josh Brown. He'll try to tie it up as Kalen Thornton chased him down from his rush end position. Kalen Thornton has solidified that defensive line. He had anterior cruciate ligament surgery reconstruction, and now he's just getting back to where he can push off of that leg like he did before the injury, and he's the one that blocked the extra point last week against Kansas State. Yeah, he's already got a 48-yarder as long as to the season. It'll be another 48-yard try. Josh Brown tries to tie things up. A little more than a minute to play in the half. Bad snap. It was high. Yeah. And that'll do it. The holder, Joe Chrisman, a backup quarterback, could not bring it down and get it to the proper side. It was high, and it was almost at his chin strap. Yeah. Yeah, in the cold weather, if you're not in the flow of the game like Chrisman's not, your hands are cold. The ball is high, and you have stiff, you know, you, your fingers are stiff from the cold, and you, you're just not able to feel the ball as cleanly as, as you would on a, on a different kind of day. And, and three phases, snap, hold, and kick, all have to be executed, and that time snap was ineffective, and as was hold. Now, what can Texas do? 62 seconds left, one timeout remaining, and great field position because of the mistake, and they will throw the football. And the shotgun again, remember, first time in a bunch of years that they've used the shotgun. Running a time for Sims and behind his intended target trying to get it to B.J. Johnson. Now there's there's different philosophies on the shotgun. And, and one of the reasons you go to the shotgun is, to, is for the quarterback to get rid of the football quicker because pressure has been has been extreme. This time Bland comes on a safety blitz and, and hits Chris Sims. But Bill Walsh didn't believe in the shotgun. Joe Montana, Steve Young never took a shotgun snap. He didn't like the idea of a quarterback taking his eyes off coverage to watch the football. He wanted his quarterback to look at coverage the whole time, taking his drop, and throw the football with timing. Second and ten. Again out of the gun. Pocket holds up well for Sims. And now the dump off. And Williams can't hang on. It'll be a third and ten, stopping it with 50 seconds remaining in the half. Ivan Williams struggled on the first reception he had. He bobbled it, and that one he drops. So two teams that have been extremes and 187 yards for Texas 173 of the 187 have come through the air and for Nebraska they've got 176 yards with 156 of those 176 on the ground. Well, put Nebraska's running game with Texas passing game you'd have an offensive juggernaut. Now can they keep the drive alive on third and ten. The blitz. And almost uh -oh. like a punt, yeah. a busted play, and a pick for Josh Bullocks. Bullocks across the 45, out to the 46, and now Nebraska with a chance. Bland looked like he might have hit Sims as he was delivering it. He did. He, he nailed the quarterback in his throwing motion. Bland came again on the safety blitz out of the shotgun once again. Bland got the hit on Sims after he released it before. While he's transferring his weight during his throwing motion, Bland knocks him backwards. He can't transfer the weight, therefore the ball flutters inaccurately, and it's intercepted down the football field by Bullocks. That may be the easiest pick he has his entire career here in Nebraska. David Horn in the backfield. Land should get a big assist on that interception. From the 46, one timeout remaining for each team. Texas calls a timeout here to make sure they're 
configured properly. So five of the six timeouts used to the 6-3 Titanic. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people think guys that get down to the trenches yeah. are a different breed completely. Although this is a passion for us. It is. And a passion for these folks. Texas Longhorn football. And of course, Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium. The fans, extraordinary. You talk about 12th man, they might be 13th and 14th man. How about four wide receivers for Jamal Lord? Out of the gun. Whoa, what a shot. He wants to run the football. It's Josh Davis. Good yardage. And he saves the timeout by getting out of bounds. Inside the 42. So just about 10 yards away from field goal territory again. Forced out by Reed Boyd, the middle linebacker. Great block by Wilson Thomas, the wide receiver yeah. on the sideline. A pancake, the wide receiver. You know, they set a record. The offensive line set a record last week against Texas A&M with 110 pancakes. A lot of syrup flowing down there, College Station. Lord throwing, believe it or not, on the slant, and it's taken in. Ross Pilkington, the true freshman out of Fort Collins, Colorado. He was almost sandwiched. It helped catch the pass. It did. He doesn't have enough for the first down, and that hurts. It does not stop the clock to move the chains. Got to spike it. Stop the clock. He does with 13 seconds left. Well, Pilkington played minor league baseball for a couple years. He was averaging over 20, 22 yards a catch coming in, and that set the record. He had tied the freshman record with 12 catches coming into tonight's game. That 13th catch gives him a freshman receiving record at the University of Nebraska. Not, not, uh, he's like a 21 year old freshman though, with that minor league baseball experience. He's got some guns too, doesn't he? He's been, he's been pumping some iron. Tells you a lot about the passing legacy though. No 13 question. catches, you've got the record. Yep. Now, Lord throwing and going deep and a jump ball situation as it's knocked away from the wide receiver. Cedric Griffin defending on the play. He wanted to get it to Ben Cornelson. And a field goal try coming up to look for the equalizer on the final snap of the half. Griffin thought he had it, never had control. And, and oh, but there's the ball all oh, the ground. The referee says the ground, and he's right. The ground helped him secure the catch. He never had control as he as he somersaulted backwards. He tried to sell it, got up like I caught it. No, 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 no. The ground secured it for you. Last attempt was botched. Snap is down, and it's blocked. Texas comes through and gets the block. That's the Rod eighth. Babers on the outside did it. That's the eighth block kick this year for Texas. Make that three field goals, two extra points, and three punts. Another block kick. So it's a three-point lead for Texas at the break. And the Nissan Halftime Report with Chris Rose. Chris. Concern about Texas's hard rush. He has a couple plays up his sleeve, and we'll look for that here in the second half as well. All right, Noxie, four yards into the end zone. Josh Davis gets it out across the 20. Just barely to the 21-yard line. Well, extremes offensively when you break down the numbers. No doubt. One team's throwing it well and can't run it, and vice versa the other way. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty even Steven battle. Other than that, look at the third downs. Neither team can muster anything on third down time of possession. Just about equal. The mistakes that Nebraska had in the kicking game, bad snap and block field goal, the difference in this football game, that's why Texas is up three right now. They converted their opportunity. It'll be Lord keeping it on the option. And with good reason. He has been their best threat all night long running the football. Well, He's got it across the 36 to the 37 in the first down. He had 119 yards rushing in the first half, Joel. Over nine yards a pop, and, and he's adding to it right here. Quick decision, getting up the football field, midline option right there, and Dakari Pearson has to drag him down from behind. You know what they're going to do. Now try to stop him. David Horn, nifty move to cut it back inside before he's belted by Reed Boyd, the middle linebacker. Now, Horn was considered by most services to be one of the top five running backs in the nation last year. He's got better than 400 yards over the last four games. So just starting to pick up the pace. Yeah, he was very quiet in the first half, Joel. He had two yards, average two yards a carry, six yards in, on three rushes, trying to get him involved more here early in the second half. 
gets more than seven, eight on first down. And he gets a rare pitch. Won't turn the corner, though. Indecision really cost him. So he's shut down by Michael Huff. And Michael Huff has come up with some spectacular plays tonight. Well, this guy's a freshman. And, and he's a heck of a freshman. He's played some cornerback this year when they had injuries at cornerback. Watch him right here. He's going to blitz. Now he says, I, I get the option. I, he feathers it and, and releases from the quarterback and takes the pitch man. That is, a, I mean, he was a one-man defensive stopper right there. Huff was extraordinary. He couldn't, he, he really, Lord couldn't decide what to do with Huff, and Huff made him, made him um, make a bad decision. Horn stays in the backfield as the single behind Jamal Lord. And Lord gets a nice push. Easy first down into the secondary. There he goes. Will he make it? Just out of bounds inside the five at the three. First and goal, Nebraska. Nice hustle by Babers. Touchdown saving tackle. See if it's big or not. If Nebraska doesn't score, it's huge. If they do pump it in the end zone, it's not as big. But Babers showing the speed. But let, Lord has been an incredible. And he's got that burst, that acceleration. Down the sideline he goes. And, and, and Babers uh, tracks him down inside the five-yard line. You could see at the point of attack, though, there was a real nice push on that right side of the offensive line. Yeah, and, and, and Johnson overran it. They, they got a piece of Johnson, and, and Derek Johnson overran it, could not get himself under control. Shut down, David Horn inside the two. It'll be second and goal right about the two-yard line. Uh, See if they go back to the big back before it's all over on this sequence. Darren Diedrich. Again, did, did Babers make a four-point tackle by, by saving the touchdown, or... Is it going to be a moot point? See what Texas does on the defensive stand. See what Nebraska does in the goal-to-go -go situation. Bring the extra one in, Crewald, to join Davies and Horn. It'll be Horn making a miss in the backfield, but he can't get to the goal line. There was great penetration up front. Right at the point of the handoff, Johnson and Wright combining for the hit, and it's going to be third and goal. How tough has it been? Oh, that, that's Texas has been incredible on third and fourth and short. They had two fourth down stops. They've been tough on third down. Nebraska's one for nine. Here it is third down again. The biggest third down of the game because it's from the two yard. It is ironic though. They've taken the ball out of the hands of their best rusher in the first two snaps in first and goal situations. Now third and goal. Will Lord keep it? He'll throw it. Touchdown Nebraska. He went for the tight end. John Bolding. Great call. Little play action. Get the ball to the tight end. Tremendous call. Nebraska regains the lead. They had it early. Four plus minutes into the game. They were up 3 0 on a 48 yard field goal by Josh Brown. He'll try to make it a four point advantage and bends it in just barely for a 10 6 lead. Impressive way to start the second half for the Cornhuskers. 79 yards out of the gate on the drive. And the final two on a pass to the tight end, John Bolding. One company brings new value to the way we communicate. Yes, sir. With smartphone technology that adds color to the wireless world. Yes, sir. Fiber optic components that drive broadband internet service. Yes, and copiers that scan direct to email for instant communication around the globe. Yes, Minutes out of the locker room for Nebraska to finally get in the end zone. First touchdown of the game. Lord finding John Bowling, but the big play, the run by Jamal Lord. And overall, the way he dominated the drive. And that's what Turner Gill is talking to Lord about right now, saying, man, that was tremendous execution. Keep it going. Brown. A high short one. It'll be taken by Ivan Williams. And that's being kind to say it's being taken by Ivan Williams. <laughs> he barely got two at the 21-yard line. Yeah, it took him. And here's the play you're talking about, the option. Lord turns it up, and then it's off to the race. His missed tackle. And Babers hustles and pulls Lord down at the three-yard line. And then great call. Little play action fake, and bowling's wide open. He's bowling for dollars in the corner of the end zone back there. And here's all. Here's... Now there's Huff. Huff and, and, and Johnson, they're thinking option. And, and, and he vacates the area. They throw the football to the area Huff vacated in coverage. So they guessed option, guessed wrong, and the play action was a great call. Now 
Sims and the Longhorns down by four. Flag down to the play and a dead ball foul. False start coming up against Texas. Yep. Crowd noise. Crowd's into it now. Nebraska has the lead. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Let's see if they go right back. At Fabian Washington, the true freshman who's starting in the corner, trying to keep up with B.J. Johnson or Roy Williams, the two starting wide receivers. Yeah, I, I, Roy Williams is the guy that ate him alive in the first half. Roy Williams six catches for 92 yards. You got to see if how they've adjusted to eliminate Roy Williams. Roy Williams is down here on Gross. Up at the top is the matchup you're talking about. B.J. working against Fabian Washington. Sims in the first half, 14 of 27 for 173 yards. He had one picked off, and the delay doesn't fool the Huskers. Barrett Rue, the middle linebacker, he had penetrated efficiently anyway, and it's another loss. So now it's going to be second and longer. Well, that time, Nebraska blitzed. It's, it's first and 15, and it was a safe blitz whether Texas threw the ball or ran the ball. Watch watch the blitz. Watch the blitzing action here. And, and they're taking their gap responsibilities to prevent the run, and they're also got rush lanes to pressure the quarterback. Great call on first and long. Second and 17, Sims not out of the gun. Looking to Roy Williams. They forgot about Williams, and he might have a first down. He's out of bounds right at the marker at the 31. Boy, not only did he have a cushion in the corner, but for some reason, the defensive back looked like he was looking for a slant and bit inside. Yeah, he, he did. He, he got frozen. And, and Roy Williams is a size, speed, ratio nightmare. 6'4", 210 pounds that can run like he can run. And, and he's got a size 15 shoe. This guy's got a hoof on him, and he can pick him up and put him down. I mean, that's 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 incredible. Look at the, look at the, look at the, look at the hoof on that guy. I mean, that's, that's covering some real estate. When he gets striding with that 15 shoe. So you can hear him coming. Yeah. It's like Noxie while they get the measurement. All right, Joe, I talked to Roy Williams before the game. Guys, you may recall he strained that hamstring against Houston a few weeks ago. Hasn't been healthy, but he said this is the best health he's been in since straining that high that hamstring against the Houston Cougars a few weeks ago. So Roy Williams just about 100 percent. No question about it, Noxie, because when you factor in the weather, I mean, the fact that he can keep that hamstring loose in temperature in the 30s like it is, I think speaks volumes to the health of that hamstring. So that's a great, great point. They have the first down. So they convert on second and 17. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 31. Should be a free down, but no flag. And Sims in trouble. Dumps it. Williams has it. Makes a miss. Big first down. Oh, wow. Barely stepped out of bounds. Well, he stayed in. Well, he was out. But they didn't mark it. They didn't mark it at all, but he was out of bounds. His foot definitely went out of bounds. Maybe it didn't touch down, but we're on that sideline. He's got it to the 20-yard line. This will be an interesting look. Yeah, it, I, I think he, he was tiptoeing that sideline, but there was an official right there looking down the sideline. And, and, and look at the strength, the arm strength, the Sims getting hit, falling backwards. Williams cuts back inside, makes rude miss. Babers, gross. He stays in bounds, and he and he, he, oh. he he's in bounds, tightrope in that sideline, and Williams is down job, the sideline. Ben. Tremendous effort by Williams. Just in then. It looked like the edge of the foot might have hit the chalk. Texas is not complaining, and they've got a first and ten inside the 21. Four-point lead for Nebraska, showing the blitz. It's a run blitz. Benson. Wow, taking root for a ride. Wow. Was that a rude ride? <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know what you got to do on after that? You put a token in for that ride. You can't take a free ride. You got to you got to pay with a token. And, and now they talked about big plays in the passing game. And Sims under pressure makes him pay. And, and it was just an incredible effort by Ivan Williams. He's to the run blitz we talked about earlier. You got to stay in your in your path, your gap control responsibility, penetrate the line of scrimmage, and disrupt. Make Benson make his first cut in the backfield. He got about four. Now the fade into the corner. Williams oh, jump ball, oh. touchdown Texas. Gee, on gross. You set it a beautiful pass from Chris Sims, where only Roy Williams could get to it. A little bit too high for Dewan Gross. Well, you talk about answering. I mean. Nebraska scores in seven plays to take the lead, and Texas comes right back down the football field with big plays. Sims to Ivan Williams, Roy Williams. It was a Williams drive with Sims in there a little bit, sprinkled for good measure. 
Well, just to get, he gets both feet down. He had not only one, he had control of the football, both feet down on Gross and blue fade. Boy, Williams is a weapon in the fade. Bang up for the point after, and don't talk about that card going for two because you still have that Bengals card with you. So it's a 13 to 10 lead. We didn't see a touchdown me. the entire first 30 minutes. Now they're coming in bunches. Going at it. Texas and Nebraska. Richmond McGee ready to kick it off. And Texas has the lead again after their own 79 yard drive. Follows a 79 yard drive from the Huskers. Two plays fewer to get that 79 yards covered. It'll be Davis across the 15. Beats wow. the man of the 30. Wow. Only the kicker. And McGee does a good job. And was it McGee? Now, uh, Dorian McCullough with a defensive back. Looked like too good a tackle for a kickler. Exactly, kicker. exactly. <laughs> he, went, he went after him hard, get the helmet across the bow, took him right down. The son of tough Tony Davis. Josh Davis, who was amongst the national leaders last year in kickoff returns, finds a seam. Look at that cavity. Man, and, 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 and Davis says, I'm, I'm going to take advantage of that. And, and, you know, there was a missed tackle by Texas along the way by Richmond McGee, the kicker, and you'd expect that. Locking up, you know, you, you, boy, hands outside the framework of the body. You gotta, you can get away with those from time to time. Taylor reversing his field on first down. Nothing there. Great pursuit by Johnson. Derek Johnson, who we've not talked about much because he's not, they've been maybe going away from him, but he has not been in the middle of things tonight. Comes through there, and that's great pursuit. Yeah, it is, and, and he can really run. And, and, and I think what Derek Johnson's done a few times, Joel, is overrun it. You know, he, he goes, to try to get to the point of attack with reckless abandon. Sometimes he can't break down well enough and kind of runs by it. Gain of only a yard, but it looked like Taylor was going to pick up something. And now the belt by the linebacker, Reed Boyd. You feel those. Those are body blows. They wear on you. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, Lord's durable. I mean, Lord took a bunch of hits last week against Texas A&M by carrying the ball 30 times. In, in one football game. That was the record for the quarterback position at Nebraska. So now does he throw on third and eight? I don't think so. I run the option. Spread him out, run that option. And he's got bit. Dietrich behind him. Bilkington and Thomas tight to the bottom of the screen. And he's going to throw the football. At least he might. And going deep. Not close to his intended target. Trying to get it to Wilson Thomas, who leads the team in catches with 23. And Corey Redding finding the Lord to put him on his wallet. Yeah, and, and Corey Redding has done this with regularity, and, and he just gets the edge and, 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 and gets the hit as Lord's releasing the football. And Wilson Thomas plays on the Nebraska basketball team as well. He averaged four and a half points a game and almost four rebounds a game last season. He's six foot six inch wide out. That's who Lord was trying to go to, but couldn't get it done. Larson kicks to Nathan Basher. And sends out a beautiful punt. Now, can they get it inside of the 10? Yes. He'll help with a nice hop. It'll die inside the five. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Those hidden yards you were just talking about in special teams. Boy, do they pay off. And now, ball security of the utmost for Texas back thrown three, leading by three. College football center, Sim, 17 of 30 for 254 yards and now a touchdown. Willie Gamble and throw from their own end zone. Gross is matching up with Williams. Now, good cutback move by Cedric Benson and into the secondary, his best run by far. Before that, he was only 12 for 32. And you find out about your offensive line going into the end zone when you're first and goal and coming out of your own end zone when you're backed up. It's power football. And look at Dockery get things done and, and finish. And look at Benson run through tacklers and, and get yards after first contact. 60% of his yards this season are after first contact. And, and, and significant contact made by Bullocks, but Benson ran right through it. He shot him easily. And now it's a first down of the game of 17 yards. The longest run of the night for the Longhorns. So what do they do? Throw it on first down. And Roy Williams has it underneath against Dewan Gross for a short gain of five. Now that is the 18th completion by Chris Sims. It's interesting because he throws a serious fastball. He's had about four or five drops easy tonight. That's got to be tough in this weather. Yeah, it, it, it's Chris and, and 
Here's the offensive coordinator, Greg Davis, that's doing a good job of mixture, a nice little mixture of, of the run and the pass, particularly on first down. And we'll talk about Chris Sims maybe putting a little more air under it and other things here after this play. Second and five. After the pass to Williams. Benson waiting for a hole that really doesn't develop. He just plugged it for a couple. Up to the 27 and now third and three. When, when the temperature's in the 30s, your quarterback has to help sometimes as a receiver take something off that fastball, throw a slight change, and put a little air under it so you have more of an opportunity to make the catch. A couple of uh, the drops that occurred, Cedric Benson can recall down the sideline, too much of a frozen rope, very little margin for error there. Put a little more air under it and take a little speed off. Big third down, field position wise. Nebraska stops him here. They get great field position. Sims only needs three. Williams, great low grab. Boy, did he adjust to that pass? Yes, he did. Wow. That's a big-time play. And Chris, in, in talking to Benson, you see Sims talking to Cedric Benson about blitz pickup. And, you know, maybe maybe Cedric went the wrong way and somebody came clean and got the hit on Chris Sims, but he still... The thing about Chris Sims that's most impressive to me, he holds that ball to the last second and still throws that 95-mile-an-hour fastball while he's being hit. He has got a big league arm, there's no doubt. Roy Williams came into the game with 25 catches. It's not been a dominating year for him. It has been a dominating game with 10 so far tonight. First and 10 for the 34. Sims with time. And that low and away fastball to Roy Williams who says, hey, he tied me up a little bit. But Roy Williams on that previous snap, he had it. He was inside and then turn around to get it outside. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, Joel, he made, uh, he made the low the low catch and, and the hit that Sims took as he's throwing the football. I mean, he gets crushed it just after he released it and, and, and knee level. Roy Williams just plucks that thing, and it's it's traveling now. It's got some RPMs. He just plucks it like it's stationary. Second and ten situation. Cedric Benson, the only one in the backfield behind Chris Sims. And on the night, only 36 yards rushing for Texas. The blitz picked up. Now Sims has a lot of territory. He'll get the first down, sliding down. And boy, he did not get a good spot at all. He got a spot across the 43, and he, he started his dive right at the 44 near the 45. He doesn't have the first down. It'll be third in the yard. As you described, though, Joel, the blitz pickup by Cedric Benson gave Chris Sims an opportunity in a lane to run the ball. Watch Benson. Boom! I mean, stuff him and knock him backwards. And then and the Red Sea parted for Chris Sims. But Benson showing that, hey, I not only can run it and catch it, I can block a little bit, too. Excellent hit. They brought the strong side backer. He stood up Ira Cooper, the sophomore for Omaha. And now Sims gets the first down on his own. Good idea. He's 6'5". Yep. Big kid. Fall forward, and, and there was a critical play against Iowa State where he went airborne, and he was simultaneously hit by linebackers from Iowa State. It was like fourth and an inch, and it was very, very pivotal play, and, and they spotted it where he just got it by an inch, and Chris Sims says, like you, Joel, I'm 6'5". I know I can get an inch when I go airborne. Now, this is huge because it starts at your own three. Right. You go the length of the field and put Nebraska down by 10. They're desperate. They're not a come from behind team, even though they came back. That deficit was 17 points against Texas A&M. They did do it, and they did it on the road, but normally that's not their strong suit, let's face it. Time out of the field, 5.53 to play in the third quarter. Drive still alive, a first and 10 for Sims and the Horns. 153rd consecutive sellout. And a 26-game winning streak on the line, the longest in the nation, as Texas is rolling right along with a three-point lead. Good job, Chris Sims, Ivan Williams on the dump off. And in the first half, Dave Lavin, we talked about not looking off your primary early in a game. Well, Chris Sims is feeling very comfortable now after the primary is not there. Yeah, he checked down very well to his back out of the backfield. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with picking up five and having second and five. You're on schedule. And his uh, primary guy, Roy Williams, came up with his eighth 100-yard receiving game of his career already in this football game and only the second this season because of that hamstring injury. He gets five. That's great on first down. Now, could Benson match it? I don't think so. He's met by Cabongo. I got a feeling somebody's going to come up with something cute with this kid. Patrick Cabongo, it's got to rhyme. It's got to work, especially after hits like that. I'll tell you what, that is one massive man. There's Craig Bull, much maligned, under fire. But boy, how def his defense is stepping up tonight. I mean, there, he, he, his whole game plan was don't let Benson get established, make Texas one dimensional. 
If they can go two ways, we're in trouble. Make him throw the football to win it, and it is gone according to his game plan totally. Chris Sims is making plays, though. Now 271 yards of plays, but only 45 yards rushing. So you're right. It's been one-dimensional. Now, huge third and seven for the Husker defense, trailing by three. And a pocket is there for Sims. Now can Brett Robin get to the marker? Yes! Breaking a tackle inside the 40. Just coming out of the backfield of the 37, getting away from Demario Williams, the weak side backer, who was responsible for the back of the flat. And Demario Williams, junior college transfer, best blitzer. He's only 6'1", 215 pounds. He's built more like a safety and, and just ran right through him. It wasn't, it wasn't even uh, wasn't even much of a challenge for Brett Robbins. He ran right through Williams, who's not the biggest linebacker in the world for sure. Excellent run after catch. Drive started back at the Texas three. It's a first and ten at the Nebraska 37. Nebraska jump three down. Benz will make the most of it, and he's got another first down, I believe. It was a free down. Yeah, I think it was the big man. I think Kabongo jumped offside. When Kabongo moves, you don't miss him. They'll decline the offside. Yeah, take take the yards because it's first and ten. And, and and what you have to the, Nebraska has to quit guessing the defensive lineman. Don't don't listen offside, to the quarterback. Man. Defense, Defense. Penalty, penalty decline. First down. Don't listen to the quarterback. Watch the football. When the ball moves, you move. And look at this block up front. Bingham is just taken out and, and, and sustaining the block. Nice job up front by Texas. John uh, the, uh, the center for, for uh, uh, Texas, Jason Glenn, did a nice job of sustaining contact and finishing the block. First down, Longhorns. They have had the ball for a half hour now. They're in the I formation. Benson stripping and shedding tackles. He got away for the first man, Bland, but Gross finally put him down after a gain of about three. If he gets by Gross, he's in the end zone. No question about it. And, and I'll tell you, this is, this is keep away. I mean, Texas, as you said, started at the three-yard line, and we're just playing keeple. Yeah, I'm making the popcorn. What are you doing later tonight? Let's 11 o'clock. You want to watch the NFL show with me? Let's do it. A little, a little butter on the popcorn? I promise. I'll pay. The guys are there. They're ready to go. It's all presented by the U.S. Postal Service tonight after college football. Uh, first start of the NFL weekend. Now second and seven. Blitz action. You said it. The blitz is there, and the blitz of Barrett Rood pays off. I think they covered every gap yep. available. Yep. And they, they said, you know what? There's not enough time on the play clock for you to check. And the crowd noise, the problem that Texas has, one of the things when you come on the road and it's a loud crowd, you have to call it and run it. Because of the crowd noise, it's hard to communicate checks and audibles. So Texas gets at the line of scrimmage with the play called, and Nebraska changes their defense late. Texas really can't do much about it, and they sometimes are running a, a, into a bad play. This drive has taken better than six minutes off the clock. We talk about shortening the game. Now, Robin, the only one in the backfield. He'll pick up the blitz. Sims over the middle, oh. complete for a first and goal. B.J. Johnson. What a throw. That was a rope. Who? Man, that was a dart, wasn't it? B.J. Johnson, the healthiest of the wide receivers. He came up big against Kansas State for over 100 yards in receptions and ran the little inside route. And, and, boy, I'll tell you what, Chris Sims put that thing on the money, first and goal. He's over 300 yards passing. Now, you know what I like? Even with the heat coming, and he knew he was going to take a shot, he led Johnson perfectly. He's tough. I mean, you know, there's no doubt his teammates respect his toughness, both mentally and physically. High formation, first and goal from the eight. It'll be Benson. Will Davies in there as the blocking fullback, but not much. I don't think they even got a yard. But Kevin Smith, good-looking redshirt freshman, made the stop. The underneath tackle out of Macon, Georgia. No and now, hurry up for the first time. Umpire wasn't ready. Chris Sims puts it on the ground. You know what? First of all, the umpire with the flag down in the play. He's got to respond a little bit better than that. Right. They wanted to go. All of a sudden, they're hustling. The umpire is still not in position. Chris Sims dislocated his pink, his ring finger again. Chris Sims dislocated the yeah, ring boy. finger on that throwing hand. It's happened to him more than once. 
and, and, they, and they just reduced it and put it back in. He's going to go right back in the game. On that bad snap, it must have stoved his finger. And more than once this year, that ring finger has dislocated on the throwing hand. You talk about a tough guy. He goes over there, the trainer pops it back into place, and here he is in the huddle like nothing happened. That's a tough dude. We saw the pain on his face, Jim Knox. Man, right here, what happened was Chris just came screaming off to the field, popped his finger, just as Dave saw, and you guys saw, and let out a big groan, hollered. Everything looks to be all right. He's walking back over to Mac Brown right now. He says, hey, I'm okay. Well, yes, but because they attended to that injured hand, now the official comes over and says, you're going to have to sit out a snap. Yeah, you, you get some medical attention. When you take medical attention, you have to go out for a snap and time out for Texas. But that's but tough. Chris Sims, the, it's like a basketball when it stows your finger up. That snap, he wasn't expecting it. it hit him right in that ring finger and, and, and stoved it up and dislocated it. That's a tough kid, I'm telling you. That, I've done that many times. I dislocated my uh, little finger a lot. Now, as a lineman, though, you can just tape them together. You can just tape the two. But as a quarterback, you can't tape them together because you got to throw the football. Watch the snap. Hit him right in the fingers. And so look at dislocation. Dislocation of that uh, of that. Pink. Look at the, look at the pinky and the ring finger right there. Things dislocated, stoved up, and he's off to the sideline to get it put back in. Right away, he's grabbing that hand saying, Whew. Well, now by utilizing the timeout, he can stay in. He does not have to miss a snap. But right, there's right. only one timeout left for Texas. Now, here's another philosophy in theory. Do you take the down and let him go third and goal to the eight or take the yards and give him an extra snap, which they did. Right. And now it's going to be second and goal for the 13 and more room for Sims to throw. I would rather have a third and goal to the eight. I don't know if, if if your key tonight is throwing the football. Maybe you want the room. I, it's well, no, I, I'm saying I, if I'm Nebraska, right? I decline the penalty. Right, right. I don't know. It's it'll be uh, this this. You talk about a drive that started at the three yard line. Multiple play drive. Greg Davis taking a big drink, and he's taking a big sigh of relief, saying, "Boy, I'm glad my quarterback's fingers okay." Number one. And we got to finish this drive, and this is a big play in it right here. Well, actually, it was a false start, so there wasn't an option for Texas. There wasn't an option, rather, for Nebraska. So now, what will it be? Second and goal to the 13. Nice play fake. Coming back on it, B.J. Johnson. He had to leave the end zone to make the catch, and it'll be third and goal outside of the two. Okay, he was now. available early. Okay, now he just dislocated his uh, ring finger on his throwing hand. He rolls to his left and throws another dart. <laughs> I mean, that's something. That's something. You talk about gritting your teeth and, and fighting through it. It's 35 degrees or less, and and he's got that injured hand, and he threw a rocket. Uh, he's impressive, I'm telling you. This drive started with 8.34 left in the quarter. Now third and goal. And they hold him to three. Sims looking for Williams. Wow. Touchdown. Too easy in front of Dewan Gross. And they got a flag, and it may be a celebration deal. The flag came out. It may be a celebration penalty on Texas. We got a personal foul on a defense. On Nebraska. Slapped in the head. On the quarterback. They must have hit the they must have hit Chris Sims late. Hit him in the head. How about a 97-yard touchdown drive? Ooh. And Phillip Land out of frustration. A safety blitz once again hits Chris Sims late in the head. And that you yeah, a 97-yard touchdown drive. How many plays and how much time? It was keep away at its 745. best. 745. It took off the clock. Wow. I mean, that's keep away at its best. Sims throws the rocket. Bland, he hits him face mask to face mask. That's it wasn't necessarily late, but it was head to head, face mask to face mask, and the penalty, uh, the, the penalty is assessed, the touchdown stands, and then the, the penalty yards will be on the kickoff. So Texas may try a little bit of a squib or a pooch kick or something like that because they'll have an opportunity to, to try something unique. So now bang them in to try to make it a 10-point lead satisfaction of the face of Chris Sims, and deservedly so. What an impressive drive. And most of it through the air. They had that one nice run by Cedric Benson. So commanding advantage now for the Longhorns. <laughs>
Pizza. Guys, six nights in a row? Isn't hell week over? Let's go to Subway. Let's go. Anything that's not round and greasy. How about a hot, mouth-watering Dijon horseradish melt or sweet onion chicken teriyaki? Thanks luck, man. Thank you. Is briquette French for little brick? Yeah. Anyway, listen up. A barbecue grill manufacturer introduces a new model so big it puts all other ones to shame. Even the really shiny ones? Yeah, even the really shiny ones. Keep up. They rely on FedEx Ground to get affordable nationwide B2B delivery with a money-back guarantee. And Backyard Gourmets get the Thrilla of the Grilla. That must be a real knockout. It's the greatest. The undisputed heavyweight broiler of the world. All right, that's enough. Pizza! Guys, six nights in a row? Isn't hell week over? Let's go to Subway. Let's go. Anything that's not round and greasy. How about a hot, mouth-watering Dijon horseradish melt or sweet onion chicken teriyaki? Thanks luck, man. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Ted Boyd leave for the Texas Longhorns, and now in jeopardy, the nation's longest winning streak. 26 games for Frank Solich and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, now the ball is going to be teed for Richmond McGee at the 50. I just send it right out of the end zone. Give Jamal Lord, Nebraska, a long, long field. Don't get cute. And that's what he'll do. So Nebraska, first and 10 of their own 20. What's the latest downstairs, Jim Knox? All right, real quick, Joel, offensive line, Longhorn's feeling good as long as, as well as Tim Nunes, the Longhorn offensive line coach. Also, big blow for the Longhorn's defense, Marcus Tubbs, their big lineman in the locker room right now nursing a bad calf he is through for the rest of the game also roderick wright they were checking his knee as well but he's playing all right noxy thank you Tubbs 45 seconds left in the quarter and that is tough Tubbs must have gotten leg whipped a little bit when you have those calf injuries a lot of times offensive linemen are leg whip two tight ends the two wide receivers to the same side where Derek dietrich is going to Derek dietrich almost into the secondary big stop Derek johnson Big time. Otherwise, Darren Diedrich has probably got his best run of the night. So, 26 in county, the winning streak for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They've taken 73 of their last 74 at home. And don't forget who stopped the 47 game streak on Halloween 1998. Same Texas Longhorns. By a 20 to 16 count. And the scoreboard says 20 for Texas right now. Lord. Torpedoed all of a sudden Derek Johnson heard somebody called him on his cell at halftime and said those guys are dogging you upstairs <laughs> I tell you there have been adjustments at the half because we've seen three touchdowns already when we didn't see any in the first half The 20 to 10 lead after three for the Texas Longhorns trying to raise their record to eight and one And you're watching college football Saturday presented by Kia Sara on Fox Sports Net. One company brings value to your life in more ways than you can imagine. Kiosera. With high-performance components that power the technologies you can't live without. Kiosera. From sophisticated satellite communications to high-reliability medical devices that make life worth living longer. Kiosera. One company makes components for all these things and more to bring new value to our world. Kiosera. Pizza. Pizza. Hey. Oh, yeah. be like Guys, six nights in a row? Isn't hell week over? Let's go to Subway. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Anything that's not round and greasy. How about a hot, mouth-watering Dijon horseradish melt or sweet onion chicken teriyaki? Thanks Thanks luck, luck. Man. Thank you, Jimmy. There's a light in your soul it says you're one of a kind Don't never let it go Be original An individual like Dr. Pepper Be you, do what you do Dr. Pepper Be you, do what you do Stuffing better Be you, do what you do Guys are counting on me Gotta go Just one night Just one night <laughs> Nice pants Nice pants Nice pants.
What have they been? Presenting Dockers Go Khaki with Stain Defender. See? Jared's here and he's eating a hot sweet onion chicken teriyaki. That I can't miss. Sounds delicious. I'm on my way. Subway's hot dinner idea. Delicious chicken teriyaki topped with a tangy sweet onion sauce. Subway is fresh. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah brings you back to Lincoln, Nebraska. First snap of the fourth quarter. Lord on third and about six or four rather on the edge he'll get it nice block down the sideline to the 40-yard line had a big block by his wide receiver to help him out Ben Cornelson allowed him to turn the corner and gave up his body against a much larger guy yeah he peeled back on a defensive lineman and, uh, that's that you know defensive linemen don't like that but uh, you can see the action as, as Lord sees the, the, the lane to take advantage of Big defensive lineman in pursuit, Shoot, right there, and legal. I mean, that's just a great block. That's the best blocking group of wide receivers in the nation. Now Lord throwing on first and 10, deep down the middle. Oh! At the 25, the catch is made. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's to Harrion, the tight end. The tight end, Harrion. The rare throw to Harrion. And Harrion, just that little play action fake. They got the tight end over the top. Tracy Westrom did it many times during his career at Nebraska. And they really liked the potential of Harrion. And, and Frank Solich says, we've got a tight end with tremendous ball skills and, and can run great routes. And they went over the top to Harrion. 6'4", 215, like a big wide receiver. Ran the good route and great throw by Lord. Brand new ball game. 29 seconds into the fourth quarter. That is only the third catch for Matt Harry of this year. It's also his second touchdown. What a throw. Double coverage. Gina? You know, when I was first hired, we didn't have all these fancy integrated systems. Our sales program wasn't even linked with accounting. Warehouse platform in Chicago wasn't linked to anything, not even shipping. Back then, orders took days. Now, they just take hours. Wow, how long have you been working here? A couple of months now. Oh. With Microsoft Server Software, you can quickly connect all aspects of your business. That's software for the agile business. From Microsoft. Here in the Lone Star, the Lone Star State. In Texas, the star holds a place of honor. Right beside the name Ford F-150. Because F-150 Super Crew earned double five stars. The highest government safety rating. Now get 0% financing or up to 3,000 cash back on F-150. The best-selling truck in America for 25 straight years. Test drive F-150 today and you'll see why the best-selling truck is the best in Texas. Customers expect a website that delivers instant results. Like Progressive.com. Buy car insurance instantly from the site rated number one six times in a row. Visit Progressive.com. Texas took almost eight minutes off the clock to take a ten-point lead, and it vanishes in about a minute as Nebraska moves 80 yards. 60 on the final pass to the young man that very rarely gets into the game, the tight end Matt Herrian playing behind three seniors. Brown kicks it away. It'll be Selvin Young, and he's going to bring it out. Three yards into his end zone, and wow. won't make it to the 20. So the momentum has certainly shifted Nebraska's way as they chop down a true freshman from Houston, Selvin Young. Siegel making the stop, and he gets him near the 14. Well, it's hard to defend a touchdown when you don't have 11 men on the field. And you can see right here, Texas has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten players need 11. Arians lined up at the tight end position. They never the were ready, were they? No. Nope. Good reason the safety never got over. And, and Harrion just runs a just runs a, a a pattern right down the hash marks, the vertical, and beats him down the football field. One man short was Texas. I formation. Chris Sims should be offside as they felt Benson behind the line, but it should be a free five again. 
Well, that, that was our, our nose guard once again that, that's been having a problem. Ryan Bingham all night long has been listening to the quarterback. Well, that time John Clinton was in the football game. You got to watch the football. Don't guess and don't listen to the quarterback. Offside, defense, five yard penalty. Still first down. It's been, for the most part, a penalty free game as far as the long mark offs are concerned, but that is the fifth on Nebraska for 40 yards in assessments. So first and five. This three point contest. So much at stake for Texas. Number seven of the BCS. BCS rankings. Nothing doing on the ground. It's been that way since the start of the game. Benson. With maybe a yard, if that, like Kevin Smith on the stop. The first drive of the game, Texas had a first and five and went one, two, three and out. Let's see what happens on this first and five, which is a pivotal drive for Texas. Craig Bowles' defense is playing well. They're up in the bit. He's simplified a little bit. He has so many young players, only two seniors on the starting defensive unit right now. He had to simplify. It'll be second and still close to five. Sims for Roy Williams, and he threw it before Williams turned around. It was all tangled up with the true freshman Fabian Washington. So a good job of the freshman to use the boundary to his advantage. Fabian Washington stepped up when he had to. And that's now biggest third down of the game right now for Nebraska. If they can hold here and get the football back, they'll get nice field position down by three points with virtually a quarter to play. Pretty good percentage for Texas so far. Six of 14 on their third down attempts. From the 19. Pocket holds up for Sims. Catch made. What a catch by Roy Williams. Man draped all over his back. And boy, that's his 12th when he's needed the clutch one. Williams has come up with it. And he went right back to him. He said, you know what? Fabian Washington maybe made a great play, but you're going to make one against him on third down. And he did. I mean, Fabian Washington had good coverage, but it was an excellent throw by Chris Sims and a tremendous catch by Roy Williams. Little pivot route. Look at Fabian Washington. is right there, just beyond his reach. And look at the, the hands of Roy Williams. That's just, what a great picture, guys, of a guy making a great catch. Great throw as well. Most catches against the Nebraska defense this year. Now the Lawrence to Roy Williams. Benson waiting for the block, but Rude was there, and there is a flag on the play. The face mask? May have a face mask. Or was the lineman out front holding big, on big Robbie, Robbie Doan? Doan. Yeah. Was, was Robbie Doan grabbing or was Barrett Rude grabbing the face mask? Let's see what the call is here. 12 48 remaining. So close every play. And they got Doan. Now, as coaches say, if they want to, and they look hard enough, they can probably find a hold on any play. But when the hold is occurring at the point of attack, that's when it's usually called. And Doan was right out there at the point of attack. He was right in front. Our FedEx numbers were Chris Sims has gone tonight. Texas Air Stats. Yeah, and, and it's been to Roy Williams. I mean, 12 of those 17 completions. Roy Williams has been the man. He's checked down to Ivan Williams predominantly as the running back. And Brett Robbins made some plays as well. Well, Rashawn Woods caught 11 for Oklahoma State against Nebraska in their upset. And that was maybe the darkest moment of the season for Nebraska. And that's why last week meant so much for this group. Because they did come back. And they won on the road. Ended a long road losing streak after losing the week before at Oklahoma State. Now mark off the 10, first and 20 for the Longhorns. Ah, oh, movement by Dockery. Oh, no, that's the big freshman. Yeah, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan Scott on the right side. Jonathan Scott, the son of Herb Scott, the great lineman with the Dallas Cowboys. Dockery was the right tackle, moved inside. Dockery's the next of the big guys. They had Leonard Davis. They had Mike Williams, who's now playing with the, with the Buffalo Bills. Leonard Davis with the Arizona Cardinals. And big old Dockery, another 350 pound plus, depending on what he had a pregame meal be another very high draft pick for the Texas offensive line. Boy, it's first in a bunch. 
Seven penalties, 45 yards. From the 17, three minutes gone by in the fourth. Sims throwing. Deep down uh -oh. the middle. Oh, the deflection. It's complete to Brock Edwards. He's got a first down all the way inside the 40. Close to the 39. Yeah, it looked Rue. like Rue, the middle yeah. linebacker, got his hand on it. Yep, it went right through him, I thought. I mean, amazing. And that's great concentration because when your vision's obscured like that, like Brock Edwards was, Chris Sims avoided a nightmare here. And right through the hands, split the hands. I mean, right through. And that is just great reaction by Brock Edwards. You talk about concentration of the football. Rude just deflects it right to him. Ricochet rabbit. And Brock Edwards is right there. Great well, that's, concentration. That's usually a member's bounce, not a visitor's bounce. Yeah. What could have been an interception turns into a big play. First and ten. It'll be Benson. Not much on the little crease. He tried to shoot between his tackle and guard. Trevor Johnson making the hit. You know the old saying, Joel, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. There's a case of it right there on that play because it could have been a defensive takeaway and it turns into a first reception. We showed you that Chris Sims had not completed a ball to his tight ends all night. And off that uh, deflection through the hands of Rude, Brock Edwards makes a big play. It goes for 46 yards in the first down. Chris Sims, 376 yards passing. Wow. 26 of 41. It could be more. He could be over 400 easy. He had some drops in the first half. That's a career high, isn't it, for him? 376? I think it might be. And now, delay of game coming up on Chris Sims. He thought about the timeout. He's only got one left. Right. And in a three-point game, you want to save it. You know, it, it might come in very handy. They've had to burn a couple that they may regret. When you're in a close fall, ball game, you want to have all your timeouts. Texas has had no ground game whatsoever tonight. 26 carries overall for only 56 yards. And that's out of 432 yards of total offense. Well, they said the passing game was where they're going to make their big plays, and they weren't kidding. They were hoping the passing game had set up the run. So far, it hasn't. Texas started with the ball. About 30 seconds gone in the quarter. They've held on to it for four minutes in this game of keep away. Now trying to go deep into the corner. Grab is made. Was he in bounds? No, he lost the football, Roy Williams. It looked like he had it momentarily, and then in the collision on the boundary, went out. Yep. And the ball came out as well. Washington again matched up. And Chris Sims stepped up in the pocket. The old double move by Roy Williams. He's got Gross underneath. Washington over the top, just a little stutter step, a little stop and go. And Gross knocks it, stays with it, and knocks it right out of bounds. That's good coverage, and that's a great throw. I mean, even with that tremendous coverage, Chris Sims put it in a very, very small opening. So now third and 14. Can't complain with the numbers they have on third downs tonight. Brent Robin, the only one in the backfield. They're six of six so far on third and a half, and they won't convert here. Coming through, John Clanton along with Trevor Johnson. Clanton the first one. Yep. Clanton had the bull rush, and, and Clanton got the offensive lineman on skates, and I think he was matched up with the center, Jason Glenn. And when you get in bull rush back like that as an offensive lineman, you have to drop down and chop him to the ground. You can't get on a sled skating backwards. Now, you've got to keep it away from Gross. He has not been a weapon so far tonight. If you're Texas, you can't let him burn you. Little movement inside. A dead ball foul coming up. Well, there's the throwing hand of Chris Sims. You talked about. Now he's just going to tape it up. Yep, it's the it's the uh, ring finger knuckle of that throwing hand, that left hand. And you know when it's cold. It's hard enough to get a grip and a feel for the football and that's you know the last finger that comes off the ball for accuracy is the index finger so if you're going to dislocate a finger the ring finger if you're going to pick a finger is, is the one that you pick you don't want that index finger dislocated because that's the one that gives you the accuracy of the throw. Gross waits back outside of the 15. Good idea. Bradford putting it out of bounds. Now, where will they spot it? Outside the 20, I think. Ooh, 19, 18. So just shy of the 19 yard line. Nebraska's got a long field, but they only need a field goal to tie it up. 
9.27 to play in regulation. Now what about that injury? Is that going to be the determining factor before it's all over? Ooh, the For Sims and the Longhorns. Texas is home to a lot of different people, thinking and doing all sorts of different things. So why would they all eat the same food? Come by DQ today for something different to tempt your taste buds. Like the one and only dude, Country Baskets, Great Burgers, the original Blizzard Flavor Treat, and our freshly prepared salads. We've got a menu that'll please the whole bunch. Wherever you are, there's sure to be a DQ right around the corner and just left of ordinary. DQ, something different. On the next Beyond the Glory, Jerry Rice was a small town sleeper with big time dreams. We had just drafted possibly the greatest player of all time. But his NFL career didn't begin in Hall of Fame fashion. They say, you know, get him the F out of here. And when tragedy struck off the field, I could only just sit and, and just pray. It unleashed a will to succeed. And whenever you challenge me like that, I'm going to come out swinging. Football's ageless icon, Jerry Rice, Beyond the Glory, tomorrow at 8 on Fox Sports Net. How about the Iron Curtain? The Iron oh, Curtain. Okay. All time. That's all time. Oh, that was the group. That's all pro. You don't the get hogs. Oh, it was the hogs. Oh, Steel Curtain. The Iron Curtain. Yeah, the Steel Curtain. All of them. Bruce. Bruce, you must have known that, man. Yeah, but the Iron Curtain was another another team. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in the AFL. What they call the Cowboys, man, back in the heyday? Y'all got three rings. What's happening? Criminals. <laughs> <laughs> The NFL Show with Irvin, Syracuse, and Davidson. Next on Fox Sports Net. You're watching Fox Sports Net. 9.27 to play, and Nebraska has it back. Trying to tie things up or take the lead in Lincoln. With the number seven, Texas Longhorn. Lord on the short side of the field. Doesn't make any difference, does it? What a nifty move. All the way out to the 41-yard line for a gain of 22. Man, I'll tell you, once again, you've got the wide receivers, his fullback, his offensive line, all pancaking people, knocking people down. And, and, and you look at all the guys that can run the football at the quarterback position in this conference. Brad Smith at Missouri, Seneca Wallace at Iowa State. Uh, you got Lord here at Nebraska. It's like, man, pick your poison. How about 230 yards on the ground for Lord? This time, Darren Dietrich, a short game. So he hurdles him in and gets three, almost four to the 45 yard line. That's the second time Texas has given up 200 yards rushing to a player this season. That was Griffin. Cool. Griffin got it against uh, in the Oklahoma game and now again tonight. They've had some great running quarterbacks at Nebraska. Now Jamal Lord owns the record. The rushing record for quarterbacks in Lincoln, 230 yards. And he's got the record for carries last week with 30, so he's he's hot. Second and about six. And Lord, well, he might have been advised to give it to his running back. David Horn looks easy up here. Pick roll and ready all over him. They shoot it up, get weight. Just crank it up a little bit. Hit us up here in the booth. It's too, these people are too cold to put their hands out to catch it. Come on now. Hot dog. Hey, if it's hot, get it up here. A little hand warmer. Why do I feel like he's an expert on this subject? <laughs> oh, look at that. That's a big old, that's got to be a towel. Yeah, bring the towel up. That's all right. Shoot that bad boy. How big a third down is this coming up? Yeah. For Nebraska trailing by three on a third and 11. You got to clean the barrel after you shoot a few dogs. Lord out of the shotgun. Setting up the screen. And a low fastball off the hands of Horn, but it was well diagnosed by the Texas Longhorns defense. They saw it coming. Reed Boyd to the neighborhood. Texas, uh, they have given up a tremendous number of yards tonight because Nebraska hasn't been able to throw the ball consistently, although they did get over the top with their tight end for, what, over 60 yards? To Harrion? I think it was over 60 yards that touchdown was reception. Right at 60. Yeah. Made it a brand new ball game, but now Texas will get it back and try to play keep away. Nathan Basher, can he be a difference maker? Larson, a returnable tight. Backpedaling Basher from his own 10. Only to the 18. Gross made the play. His counterpart, the senior from Garfield Heights, Ohio, Dewan Gross on the coverage. And they'll put him at the 19 yard line. Texas has had some long drives in this half. Well, we talked to Mac Brown earlier today. 
about the importance of this game uh, against Nebraska. Well, there is uh, a lot to be accomplished, not only in the Big 12, but the BCS and the bowl games that are out there. And uh, But more than that, everybody talks about the end. What's better than playing in Lincoln, Nebraska, against a great Nebraska team with a, a classy bunch of kids and a great coaching staff that we respect so much on national TV with Fox? That's pretty good stuff. So why worry about the end when we can enjoy right now? Ivan Williams, big yardage on first down. Nice little circle pattern out of the backfield. He's got it past the 33 to the 34. Well, Mac Brown, give credit where credit is due because he's won 11 straight on the road. Yep. 15 of the last 17 in his fifth year. And he's got a formula that is definitely working because of the previous 10 years, Texas was not even a 500 club on the road. And he went into Manhattan and won there. Now he's at Nebraska and he's got the lead there. And, and I agree with you, Mac. You know, it's like there's nothing better than a, than a classic confrontation, conference confrontation with Big 12 on Fox Sports Net. From the 35, first and 10. Sims looking deep. And throws it away. Nothing available. Good idea. And who would like to say that they own the only two wins over Nebraska since 91, covering 75 games? Absolutely. And look at Chris Sims closing in on 400 yards, 392 yards is a, is a career high tonight. And the other thing about Mac Brown, only three active coaches have won here at Memorial Stadium. Mac Brown could win for the second time if they hold on tonight. Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden. So that's pretty good company. 7.04 to play in this three-point affair. They put it back on the ground and keep it up top. Williams and Johnson. Wide side of the field. Cedric Benson uh -oh. into the secondary. Look out. He's got a first down across the 45. Moves the chains. And that is so important to take another 90 seconds off the clock as he's pulled down by Bullocks around the ankle. That was a very sure tackle by Bullocks. I thought Cedric Benson might might pop this a little bit. You can see Bullock's right here. Watch him make the play, and, and that's that's very, very nice job. Because uh, Benson a lot of times will run through those. Because Bullock's didn't get his head across the bow, didn't get his head in front of his body. But he hit enough of them to get him down. It's the fourth possession of the second half for Texas. Talk about a change. Texas had the ball eight times in the first half. We didn't have any touchdown for the first half. Nebraska also had it eight times. Cedric Benson, a little shoulder shift. Maneuvers his way across the midfield stripe. Man gives him about three on the first down carry. But more importantly for Texas, takes it down to about the six-minute mark. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra. Brings you right back next Saturday for the Pac-10 showdown. It's Cal and Arizona State. Coverage will all start with the College Football Saturday kickoff show at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. So join us for college football next Saturday afternoon. Second and seven, a long six. Sims on a pretty play fake, but they're keeping up with Williams that time. That's where he was available against the linebacker. That time, the linebacker kept up with him. That naked bootleg has been awfully good to, to the Texas Longhorns tonight. He's checked down to his fullback on, on one particular scheme to Ivan Williams successfully. He's hit Roy Williams multiple times. It's been a very good play. For Texas, they've gone to it about a half a dozen times. Texas just failed for the first time on third down of the second half. There's six of seven in the second half. This is a third, long six, almost seven. Out of the gun. Underneath, it's there. The bullet again. Who else? Roy Williams with a career night. Don't forget, he had 25 catches over the first eight games of the season. He's got 13 tonight. And, and when you have a healthy Roy Williams that can run like a deer and he's built like a bull, you got a problem. So Gross is uh, he's going to bail. This is called man coverage, but he's bailing. He's trying to get in his hip, and he just drove him off the foot, off the line of scrimmage, down the football field, and just hooked up. Came back to the football effectively, and a ski Reich was thrown by Chris Sims. He stepped up in the pocket, and his mechanics are awesome. From their own 19-yard line, where the drive began. It's at the Nebraska 39, and it's Cedric Benson waiting for a block to develop. It never gets there. In on the hit, Ryan Bingham, along with T.J. Hallowell. Got a short game, but more importantly, next snap is going to take place inside of five minutes left. You know, at, at, at some point, you are crowding the line of scrimmage. You've taken the, way run, the run away from Texas. 
But when the quarterback's thrown for 400 yards, do you continue to light, let him play pitch and catch? Craig Bowl continuing to go with the same philosophy. Make Chris Sims make plays to beat him. And so far, it's happening. He sends Benson out of the backfield. He's already thrown for 402 yards. Benson was available. Goes back the other way. Jump ball. And it's taken away. But Gross got a piece of Williams before the ball came in. It'll be 15 yards and another first down. Yeah, Gross had great position, but when he when he squeezed Roy Williams, he squeezed him away from any opportunity to make the play. You got to locate the ball on its way in, don't you? Yeah, in order to in order to make a play on it, you most certainly do. Because he he had good coverage and. And what you try to do is when you, you use the sideline as, a, as an extra defender, as you described before, Joel, and he, and he, he jumped into him prematurely. He, he, Roy Williams kind of conned him a little bit. Cause <laughs> Call Gro on that. Yeah, Gross was looking at his eyes, and Roy kind of conned him to, into thinking the ball was arriving sooner than it really did, and it drew the pass interference penalty. You know what Roy does well? He doesn't give it away where he puts his arms up. Right. Like it's, it's there. His arms were still pretty close to his sides. Right. But he just gave that little... Look, you know, you lift your eyes like, oh, here comes the ball in gross bit. Major Applewhite, the last one to throw for 400 yards for Texas. That was against Oklahoma State back in 98. Sims out of the edge, hitting his tight end. Brock Edwards, big yardage inside the 10, first and goal of the five. Boy, he... Well, the play action was just beautiful by Chris Sims. That's the naked bootleg once again, and Josh Bullock's missed the tackle. And, and Brock Edwards has been large, hasn't he? I mean, he made the play when the ball went through Rude's hands and makes another big play here. The naked bootleg, the fullback and the tight end have been available. Roy Williams has been available. Greg Davis has done a great job of getting Chris Sims out of, out of pocket with all by himself, no personal protector, the run action, kind of freezing the Nebraska defenders and getting out there in the perimeter with a run pass option. And he's got 419 yards now, two touchdowns and interception. I'd say he stepped up big in this big game, didn't he? Coming out party for Chris Sims, especially if they can seal the deal by putting him into the end zone here and go up by 10. Going to be Benson. Down to the three. Second and goal. So Brock Edwards with a 17-yard grab after the 46-yarder earlier on the deflection you were talking about. Two for 63. And right now, he has used seven different receivers. Williams, Williams, that's Ivan and Roy, Jeffrey, Edwards, B.J. Johnson, Brett Robin, and Cedric Benson one time. And remember, earlier in this half, his ring finger was going sideways, and they had to put it back into place, reduce it back into place on the dislocation, and he's still throwing seeds. They've held on to the football now better than four minutes, getting it with 7.36 remaining. Second and goal, Benson. Can he get there? Touchdown, Texas. That just might do it. Well, that's Benson's eighth rushing touchdown on the season, and it is a large one in this football game, and Chris Sims take a bow. And uh, Benson, you take one as well. That was the finalization of a heck of a drive. Jason Glenn, the center for Texas. It's a little inside zone, and, and he does a good job of, of picking one off and getting to the linebacker level, and. And he's knocking Root around. He's knocking Bland around. That's uh, that's desire by the center. Mangum for the point after the big one to make it a 10-point deficit for Nebraska. So will it be over? The nation's longest home winning streak, 26 on the line for Nebraska. Chris Simmons, the difference, putting Texas in a position to succeed all night long, throwing for better than 400. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, brought to you by Kia Sara, one company, countless solutions. By Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And by new mixed grills from Healthy Choice. Big grill taste without the grill. Welcome back to Lincoln. Some sad eyes in the state capital. But from the Lone Star State, well, they're smiling on the sideline. No, you see the dreadlocks? The last guy that won here had dreadlocks as well, Ricky Williams. <laughs> Good call. And now it is going to be the tight end picking it up. That's Kyle Ringenberg taking the short pooch out past the 35. Another's fault. You can get it early. We've talked about it later tonight. I've already promised I'd pay for the popcorn. 
Dave Lapp is joining me. NFL show presented by the U.S. Postal Service. I didn't tell him he's buying the pizza, though. There you go. Popcorn's cheap part of it. And the way he eats pizza, double larges. Come on, Lapp. Meat lovers, baby. <laughs> Meat lovers. <laughs> From the 40 on first down, the pitch and a big one to Josh Davis. First down in Texas territory. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, as you can match, you know, all smiles on the Longhorn sideline right after that touchdown. Chris Sims came to the bench and said, I want Sunday off. You see, if they win tonight, it looks like they will get Sunday off. No practice for the Longhorns on Sunday if they win tonight. All smiles down here on the horn sideline, guys. I'd bring him back just to work on the ground game. Not Josh Davis with the long game. Oh. And now Lord going for the bundle in a jump ball. And the catch made no, but a flag on a pass interference call yeah. as they wanted to get it to the wide receiver, Ben Cordelson. Getting him earlier, though, Cedric Griffin. Now, let's not forget when Texas went up 20 to 10. Nebraska came back with a touchdown about 60, 70 seconds. That's all it took on the 60 yard pass to the tight end, Harrion. So they can get the quick score. They can. And all of a sudden, the onside kick. Defense. 15-yard penalty from previous spot. First down. Look at, look at the rosy cheeks on our referee. I mean, it, it's chilly down there. He's got the cheeks rosed up pretty good. And, and you know, Noxie, take Sunday off yourself. It's been cold down there, man. Get a little uh, little hot chocolate. He's got Cu an igloo, though. A couple of marshmallows. We built one for him. Mac will give you Sunday off, too, Noxie. From the 25 of Texas. Short side of the field. The option working again for Lord. And he's close to a first down. Gets nine, but clock the biggest enemy for Nebraska. They'll work in the hurry up. Lee Jackson in on the hit. Now the executive producer of Fox Sportsnet is Bill Borson, coordinating producers of College Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed by Ken Fouts, providing our great pictures, and they were sensational tonight. College Football Saturday Studio Show, produced by Lloyd Maxson, directed by Joe Wittes. Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry, and the Vice President of Field Operations is Karen Newman. And once again, you know, the, the, the University of Nebraska are honoring Kenny Fouts, and, and rightfully so, a proud alum. And uh, it's going to be the last time Kenny's going to be here at Nebraska in, in top shelf, boy, class act. It was a big night for Ken Fouts and all of us here at Fox Sports Net. We certainly appreciate what he's done for us. Well, they'll have him back, though. I know Ken. He's going to be back, and they'll play all the local golf courses. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a, there's a guy that, that can hit it long and straight now. You know, I mean, he's What Mr. is that name? I'm trying to think of the name of the Mr. beauty Middle. we played here last year. Was it Firethorn? Firethorn. Man, oh, man. I think it's a peak die course. It was heaven. And, and so you, Ken Fouts will be here. And, and you know what? As, as, we go, as we go around the league to all the different coaches, in the conference when they find out that you know it's Kenny's last tour I'll tell you what he's uh, he's made a lot of friends because these coaches they think a lot of them as well FedEx numbers <laughs> boy top heavy extremes for the two teams yep. we've been talking about it and now Lord on second in the yard 250 to play wide side shovel nice. Nice. Davis spinning first and goal inside the nine that'll stop the clock for the movement Corey Redding in on the hit, the senior from Houston. He's wearing the same number as, as his dad, Tony Davis, and he's a Tasmanian devil, whirling dev, dev, devil just like his dad. I mean, he's it's a clone. Now Taylor on the slant, and contact. That's going to be pass interference as they wanted Pilkington. But a tackle early by Michael Huff. He hit him low. Yeah, he got now it's going to because it'll be at the point, I believe, Huff and Pearson sandwiched them before the arrival of the football. So it'll be first and goal all over again. Should be half the distance, half the right? Half distance. First and goal. Take it inside the five. That's interference. So that'll stop with 238. But as I mentioned, the ball replaced. they got the ball the with 317. They haven't needed a minute to take it from their own 40. To a first and goal at the three. So Texas letting them back in it way too quickly. Now the trips in the backfield of the power on. Lord on the pitch. Touchdown, Nebraska. Darren Dietrich. Boy, just a great cut block on the edge.
Watch, watch, watch the cut block right here. Boop, choo, down. I mean, that, that's extraordinary. Made it easy for Dietrich. When you take people off their feet, you know, pancake, that's huge. The point after makes it a three-point game. And now, do you need to go for the onside kick with 2.34 to play? And I bring an update because you still have two timeouts left, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Right, and it all depends on what Frank Solich thinks about his defense, you know. The momentum of the game. Can his defense stop Chris Sims? He's thrown for over 400 yards. If they don't execute it, you have to think of the worst case scenario. If they recover the football, it's easy. If they don't, can his defense stop Chris Sims, Roy Williams and company, and get the ball back for his, his offensive football team? So you have to evaluate the big picture. You know, how your defense is playing, how your offense is playing, momentum of the game. You have some momentum now, you just took it in the end zone. 490 yards of total offense for Texas. 423 for Nebraska. You saw those numbers. 419 to the 490 for Texas through the air. It's almost like any time they needed a first down, Roy Williams had enough on the outside of a cushion. He could just go off the line a few yards, take it from Chris Sims. So yep. I, I, I tend to believe I would go for the onside kick because I don't know if I could get the ball back. I, I, that's it, not, they're I, not setting up for it right now, though. Uh, Texas has got their hands team out there though. Texas is anticipating the onside kick. They've got all the all the uh, skilled people up front. All these guys right here are, are running backs, defensive backs, and wide receiver types. The only one back deep is Selvin Young, the running back. And it's going to be kicked away. So Young will bring it back from the goal line. Gets outside. Needs a block. And a nice move across the 35. Good field position. Nathan Basher instead rather brought it back. Not the running back in the double number situation. But Basher. Man, yep. Texas has it. At their own 39-yard line. That's a huge return because even if uh, Nebraska's defense does go 1-2-3 and out with a decent punt, Nebraska will still have quite a bit of field to have to negotiate. But if, if Texas can can just crank out a couple three first downs, they'll be genuflecting, taking a knee and running the game out. Longhorns with one timeout remaining. Talk about the two for the Huskers. You better hold on to the football. Cedric Benson in the eye behind Will Matthews. Benson, maybe a half. Timeout, Nebraska. Ryan Bingham with the penetration and the hit. And the one thing that you have to do if you're Texas, Chris Sims, when he had the team huddled up on the sideline, two hands on the ball. Don't let him rip the ball out of there. Ball security is a must. And what Nebraska's talking about is forcing a turnover. Get the ball out of there. Well, these two teams have had some incredible confrontations. We talked about 98. Well, how about 96, the Big 12 title game? Priest Holmes, a touchdown run. He had three on the day. James Brown. A deep one to Wayne McGarity. That made it 30-27. And the coach at the time after that one, John McAfee, celebrating for the Longhorns win as they prevailed by 10 John in the Big 12 title game. John McAfee now out at Arizona, Joel, the Pac-10. And uh, he was uh, a very, very creative offensive coach. And he made a gutsy call in that game on fourth down, going for it, and a little play-action pass to the tight end that was huge in that football game. He was definitely a gambler. Yep. I remember doing a game at the Cotton Bowl, the Texas-Oklahoma game, where he gambled. And it was a battle of field goals that day, a few years back. So here we go, second and ten. Three-point lead for the Longhorns. 2-14 to play. And one time out of remaining for each team. Well, they put it up this early. No, Benson. Benson gets it across the 40 to the 42. Last time out of the use by Nebraska. With 206 left. So a dilemma for Mac Brown. Do you leave it up to your defense? Do you keep it on the ground? Because then you can take it down with another running play inside of 90 seconds before you have to punt the football. I think what I do here is I go back to that play that's been so good to me, the naked bootleg, and give Chris Sims a two-way go out in the perimeter. And I would, I would configure it where I have more than one receiver to go to. I'd have my fullback at, at closest to the line of scrimmage. I'd have my tight end down the scrimmage intermediate and somebody a little bit deeper. I'd give him different quadrants to throw to. 
and, and I get him out of pocket or he can throw it away without suffering a intentional grounding. And the final option is him to run it, which is the, the worst option. But I might think about going back to that. So Nebraska has used their final timeout. And will they put it up? It'll be third and seven. Roy Williams has had that cushion all night long. I got to believe they're going to put Gross on Williams. That's what's at stake. Last time they lost, it was by four. 20 to 16 Longhorns. That's their only loss in their last 74 at home. The crowd has been a factor. Williams is going to set up on the short side. Believe it or not, he's against the rookie, the true freshman Fabian Washington. Here we go. The ball game on the line. Washington fell down, and Roy Williams has sealed it for the Longhorns with a first down to the 47. So if they were going anywhere, you knew what direction Chris Sims wanted, and that was in the direction of number four. Are they going to call a, a celebration penalty on Roy Williams for doing the nesty plunge? I mean, after he caught the ball and knew he had the first down, he fell flat in his backside. And it's got to be a dead ball foul. The first yeah, right. down stands there. Right. Fabian Washington went down in coverage, and, and Matt Brown can't believe that they're calling the... Are they calling offensive pass interference? What are they calling here? Looks like they're calling offensive pass interference on Roy Williams. Because they're going back. Texas is headed back. He must have pushed off. Or will it be a dead ball foul, though, as you mentioned? I think they're calling they offensive calling pass interference. I, That's I, I unbelievable. Think, I, I think when when uh, Fabian Washington went down, they say Roy Williams pushed him. And that's a that's a phantom call, I think. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Wow. In previous spot. Mac Brown can't believe it. Another look at the play that Here it could is. determine the outcome. Here it is. As, as Roy Williams comes off, the, and he pushes with the right hand, and they, and they say that the push of Roy Williams' wow. right hand knocked Fabian Washington down. But Washington had his hands up as well. What did they call it? The old chicken fighting inside? And Mac Brown can't believe it. He said they're both, they both have a right to that spot on the field, and, and both were pushing and shoving, and, and because of the size of Roy Williams, he overpowered Fabian Washington and knocked him to the turf. He didn't slip on the turf, in the official's opinion, he was pushed down to the turf by Roy Williams, big right paw. Clock is running. Texas is going to utilize their final timeout in just a moment to take the play clock down all the way and then make the timeout call. So disbelief for the Texas Longhorns and just about everybody else. Roy Williams can't believe it. He's like saying to the official, hey, hey, come on now. That's unbelievable. It looked like it was an automatic for his 14th catch of the night and a win for Texas. Now the biggest break of the night belongs to Nebraska. Mm. Boy, that is uh, that is one tough call to make. But you know, there's home field advantage for a lot of reasons. You get those calls at home. I guess you don't get those calls when you're on the road. Another look back at what they're calling pass interference on Roy Williams. Watch, watch the push. Once he gets down the football field, watch the right hand. And right hand right there, boom, push right there. The right hand pushes Fabian Washington down, and that's what causes the separation for Roy Williams in the interpretation of this official back here through the flag. This one was spotting the ball, did not make the call. Now the flag came out very late. You still didn't see the flag, even when Roy Williams was down. Might have been double clutching for it, couldn't find it. You are right. <laughs> So 94 seconds left. Nebraska would take overtime right now. Trailing by three. It was a 6-3 lead for Texas at the half. So all the scoring in the second 30 minutes of play. And an empty backfield for Chris Sims, Williams, Johnson, Jeffrey, Timmons, Shanahan all in there on third and 22. Now will Nebraska bring more than the four? Will they bring five in the rush? Only four. Quarterback draw. Just keep the clock going. It's a good idea. That'll take it down inside to a minute to play when they do snap it again. It's rolling. They still haven't started the play clock for the punt team. And let's see when they do start it. This is working against Nebraska. They still haven't started it. 
Well, they're anxious, as you can tell, the largest crowd in the stadium's history. Now they started. How about Chris Sims's night tonight? 29 of 47, 419 yards, two touchdowns. He was, he had a couple that they couldn't quite handle that fastball he was delivering in the cold weather. Now, you do not need to snap it until there's a couple of seconds left. Bradford's got to keep it away from Dewan Gross, who leads the nation in punt returns. Ooh. Now it's a wobbler down the middle. Gross at the 40. Halo. Down. It's Halo. going to be a penalty. Uh -oh. Here comes Gross. Look out to the 40. Slowed down by the punter. And finally pulled down wow. in field goal territory already. Unbelievable. You got to keep it away. You keep it away. You don't let him touch the football. The best in the nation at it. And they gave it to him. Yep. And Gross. I mean, he had four returns of over 25 yards this season. Make it five. Man, now three of them he's taken back for touchdown. They've got it all the way to the 16, so forget about a field goal. They've got plenty of time to win the game. Oh, heck yeah, they do. They, you know, the way they're running the option. And boy, Gross did a good job of securing the football. Man, did the big player step up at the big time. Oh, look at that score. He caught the back half of the football. It almost went through his hands. Man, what a game. And how big is that penalty call, that offensive uh, interference penalty it's now? It's the difference in the game. Woo. Otherwise, Texas walks away with a win easily. Yeah. Only one in the backfield, Davis on the option, short side. No timeouts left for Nebraska. They've got to hurry. Got to spike it. You have to spike it. Got to conserve some time. It'll boil down to if they can't get it in. Josh Brown, their place kicker, there's the spike. It stops it with 16 seconds left. And here is their one snap to try to get it into the end zone. Well, and, and I think they're debating on the sideline whether they kick now because if they have a bad snap, right. they then can they kick another, another, try. another try at Good it. Call. So, so they may be thinking about it. They're huddling up on the sideline. You can see them all. Frank Solich is talking about it. 16 seconds. You know, if I get a bad snap, I get another shot at it. Do I take a shot at the end zone? I mean, all those things going through his head right now. Or does he say, Mr. Brown, jog out there and tie this football game right now. We'll take our chances in overtime. Here we go. From the 16. 16 seconds left. Looking into the end zone. Back corner. Intercepted. Wow. Intercepted at the goal line. Basher. What a play by Basher. Unreal. And that will preserve the win. Man, what a game. And Lord can't believe it. And Basher says, thank you, Lord. And that's exactly what Mac Brown, the whole Texas sideline, is staying, saying right now. And, and Frank Solich can't believe it. Turnovers and penalties, untimely turnovers and penalties at crucial situations have hurt his football team. None more than this one. Throws into double coverage. Vasher underneath. Griffin over the top. And, and Vasher makes the play. You only have to get one foot in. He does. And he gets his right foot in, too, before his butt hits down. I mean, great play. Throws into double coverage. Well, I guess it would have been better to kick that field goal at that time with Brown and take your chances then. Without a doubt. Now with 10 seconds to go. Just a knee, but don't forget they're at the one. So you want to take that knee, but move forward. Yeah, you don't want and to take that. And that'll do it. And that's exactly what Chris Sims does. Well, Chris Sims definitely our Dr. Pepper player of the game. He finished tonight throwing for 419 <laughs> yards, a career best, and, and what an emotional Brown. night for Mac Brown. Mac Brown will sleep well tonight. He will sleep. He's emotionally and physically exhausted right now, like he played every snap. Go, so. What a game. Go, so. so a three-point win for Texas. Talking to his counterpart, so much respect between these two. Guys that have been head coaches in this conference now for the last five years. And let's head downstairs to Jim Knox with Mac Brown. Knox Thank you, Joe. Mac, congratulations. What a game. 27 24 comes down right to the end. Defense comes up huge. Couple of big defensive stands. Fourth and one. And then right there, Nathan and Basher seals the deal. Well, Jim is a great football game. Nebraska does it as good as anybody in the country. But the Texas Longhorns prevail tonight. What a tough bunch of kids. What a good bunch of coaches to come in here and win twice in, in 75 years. And the only two, I mean, 75 games, the only two teams to do it. Uh, that's great. Frank Solich does a great job. The Nebraska team has our respect. 
they kept coming back, coming back. Lord, they, it looked like A&M when they came back in that fourth quarter, but really proud of uh, our football team tonight. Matt, congratulations on another big victory. Let's Thank get Chris Sims hey. in here. Chris. And, and tonight, this was the best quarterback in the country. I don't care what they say. Exactly right. So Mac and Chris embrace. What a huge victory, Chris. You came through. They came out and they wanted to stop the run. They stopped the run. You threw for 419 yards tonight. You know, we knew we were going to have our opportunities, and uh, we, we did a great job of taking advantage of them tonight. And, and we played really well offensively all together, and I'm just happy to get out of here with a W. What does this win mean for you personally? Biggest victory so far since you've been here at Texas? It, you know, it could be. Hey, playing in Nebraska, this is maybe one of the most fun games I ever played in my life. And, uh, Man, I mean, beating Nebraska, we're, we're, we beat them twice out of 75 times. They've never lost a home. It is huge. Congratulations on the big night. All right. Joel? All right. 500 yards of total offense and 419 belong to Chris Sims. So that'll do it from Lincoln. Nebraska, 8-1, and one, the number seven team in the nation, prevailing by three, 27-24. For Dave Lapman, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Let's send it back to the studio now and rejoin Chris Rose, Kevin Winslow, Artie Gigantino. Gentlemen, couldn't get much better than what we've just experienced. You got that right, Joel. Welcome to the College Football Saturday Post Game Report. I'm Chris Rose working alongside the Hall of Famer, Kellen Winslow, the coach, Artie Gigantino. Guys, that last drive, Nebraska gets the great punt return. They have a shot at the end zone. What did you think of the play call there that, on the interception? Well, I like the play call. They wanted to take a shot into the end zone, but give Texas defense credit. They did a great job of holding up the receivers inside the slot and on the outside, throwing off the timing then causing Lord to throw underneath, not into the end zone. Artie, that's a shot you take in the end zone or it's out, but never an interception. Yeah, I agree with that, but I would have thrown the ball down the middle of the field, and obviously Nebraska does not do a great job of throwing the ball, and I don't believe Frank Solich would have been criticized too much if he even ran the ball on that down and then settled for the field goal and then got into overtime. All in all, though, it was a great game. And you take a look at Nebraska right now. They're 6-4. and four. They've got Kansas, which they'll win. Mm -hmm. Then they've got Kansas State and Colorado. They're looking at a 7-6 and six season. Well, it's the first time since 1968 that they have lost four games before the bowl season. Right. Amazing. Obviously, uh, something's going to happen down there at Nebraska. Might we'll be see a change it. or two. Well, there might be. Not at the top. Hey, guys, uh, more football coming your way right after we're done. The NFL show has Saints running back Deuce McAllister and their safety Sammy Knight in studio. Plus, they'll break down Brady versus Bledsoe. The Pats and Bills do battle. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But back to the college game where everybody's panicking over the BCS. Eight teams entered Saturday undefeated. So would some big-name program be left out of the Fiesta Bowl picture? Well, don't worry, because since the BCS started in 1998, there have never been more than two unbeaten teams in a single season. We start with number one, Miami, which had problems with Rutgers. The special teams providing a TD for the Scarlet Knights. But in the fourth quarter, the Canes were down until Ken Dorsey led him back. Great timing pattern by Ken Dorsey to find his big target, Andre Johnson, for the touchdown. 28 unanswered points in that final quarter, making 30 straight wins for Miami. And Kellen, since you won't say it, I will. K2, six catches, 74 yards, and a touchdown. Second-ranked Oklahoma taking on Colorado. Nate Hibble finding Antoine Savage in the middle of the field for the touch. That's on their first drive. Sooners up 7-zip. Then Hibble again, efficient today. The offense came alive for Oklahoma, but they're going to have to nip, play great on offense to make a run at the national championship. Hibble completed just 10 passes, but three found the end zone. It's Oklahoma's first win over Colorado since 1989. Third-ranked Virginia Tech struggling with Pittsburgh, but Lee Suggs, one of the untouchables, breaking it outside, then cutting it back a little bit. 59 yards on this touch. Pokey's up 21-7, but Pittsburgh finds its way back. Rod Rutherford finds Larry Fitzgerald, 10 yards in the touch. Great Gerald. Yep, three touchdowns at that point. But Brandon Myrie has just provided a 53-yard touchdown, so the Panthers could knock off the 8-0 Huskies. We'll keep you posted. Fourth-ranked Notre Dame wearing green at home for the first time since 85 and feeling green after this turnover. Pat Dillingham picked off by Josh Ott. Takes it back 71 yards for the score. Carlisle Holiday pulled early but fights his way back here. Kellen. He's trying to make something happen, scrambling, and does a nice job of giving the receiver a chance to make a play. That's what a quarterback is supposed to do. Then the Hail Mary, last play of the ball game, looking for the miracle. Notre Dame doesn't get it. First loss for Tyrone Willingham in South Bend. The BC Eagles, get this, they've taken three of the last four against Notre Dame. All right, guys, last week we asked whether or not Notre Dame was actually the best team in the mm -hmm. country. 
So what's happening now, Artie? Well, if you would have listened to me this morning on the pregame <laughs> oh, oh, show, <laughs> I talked about the boom factor, and I started at the bottom, and I talked about Miami, I talked about Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Bowling Green being the four teams that might end the year undefeated. Well, guess what, guys? It all happened today. I mean, you know, and I think Pitt is going to end up beating Virginia Tech. You know, listening to you is becoming rather painful. Why? I'm getting an it's earache listening to you rant on about how good, how great you are in your predictions. <laughs> Tell you what happened today is that we found Notre Dame, if you don't get the big play, and we talked about that on the kickoff show this morning, they've got to have the big play. They didn't get it today. The big play happened on the other side of the football for Boston College, and that Dillingham shuffle pass, trying to get rid of the football, really cost them big time. But uh, Tyrone Willingham made this point, just as Texas coach Mac Brown did during our telecast of, of our game. One loss doesn't mean you're out of the BCS picture at all or the Fiesta Bowl picture, Kellen. No, it does not. Last year, Nebraska played for the national championship mm -hmm. already with that one loss. That's why it was so important today for Texas with one loss to go into Lincoln and to get that win and to keep their hopes as slim as they may be to, for a chance oh, to get Texas to the Fiesta Bowl. Texas is a Bowl. great example because ever since losing to Oklahoma, they've come back and won three games against good teams, Kansas State, Iowa State, and then today. All right, guys. Next week, by the way, Pac-10 action right here on Fox Sports Net. We'll just tell you about uh, Arizona State and Cal in a little while, okay? Don't worry about that. But we do have more games to get to, do we not? Well, we'll tell you about the NFL show, which is coming your way right after us. Okay, Tony Gonzalez, the Chiefs Pro Bowl tight end. He'll be sitting in in studio. They'll be breaking down all the big games, the Bills and the Pats. Also, the Browns and Steelers battling for first place in the AFC North. World's largest outdoor cocktail party for the first time ever under the lights in Jacksonville. And look at this. Ron Zook would be smiling if he held on to this lead against the Georgia Bulldogs. They are up 20 to 13. Seven turnovers between the two teams in this one. Ohio State, in the meantime, taking on Minnesota. No Maurice Claret, but plenty of Lydell Ross. Nine yards for the touch. They ran for a buck 78. Then Craig Krenzel finding Chris Vance for the 30 yard touchdown. OSU rolls 34 to 3. That defense of the Buckeyes that already loves held Minnesota to just seven first downs and 112 total yards. The Buckeyes 10 and 0 for the 10th time in school history. Georgia Tech and unbeaten NC State, but Gordon Clinkscale cutting it back, finding the end zone. Tech up 24-17, and Artie. Philip Rivers, a guy you like, but didn't get it done today. No, he was a little bit off, and I think you got to give credit here, though, Chris, to what Georgia Tech was doing on defense. They took the run away, played a lot of zone, and did a great job. Georgia Tech has now won seven of the last eight meetings between these two teams. Yellow Jackets scored 21 points in the second half of this one. Hey, we haven't forgotten about the Mid-American Conference. Bowling Green, 8-0, a 45-14 winner over Kent State in this one. Joe Alls with a career-high buck 79 on the ground and two touchdowns. All right, guys, are you shocked what's happening? Because we started the day, and we talked about it in our kickoff show, with eight unbeaten teams. We could have just four after today is over here, Kellen. Yeah, we could, but that's what's going to happen. And that's one reason we talked about our show before. I think the BCS releases their numbers entirely too early. It gets too much controversy going about what might happen mm -hmm. if eight teams are undefeated. Hey, it's going to work itself out. We might have two, maybe three teams undefeated when it's all said and done. And then it's pretty easy to find out Who's going to play in the Fiesta It's Bowl. called parody. I would spell it for you if I could spell, but I can't <laughs> spell parody. But it's about parody, but it's also about 12 or 13 games being played by each and every team. And it's also about coaches doing a great job here at the end of the season of game planning and taking away from teams what they do best. I think it's a combination of things, and I'm not sure, guys, we're ever going to see the dominant program anymore that just beats everybody year in and year out. Parody. P -E, P e a, -A P e r e. -R -E. e. No, we're not. Artie will finish it next week on our kickoff show at 11:30 a.m. Eastern. Hey, the NFL show coming your way next. Once again, Chiefs tight end Tony Gonzalez in studio. Plus, we'll have a feature on the game's most exciting player, Falcons quarterback Michael Vick. So make sure you keep it tuned in for that. All right, guys, real quickly, who is the best team in the nation right now? Well, right now, it has to be the University of Miami because they are not undefeated. I mean, they are still undefeated, and they have not been beaten by anybody else. You know what, though? No, you say the best team right now is the University of Oklahoma, and the reason is they're starting to play a lot better on offense, number one, still excellent on special teams, and they're great on defense.
They're the best team in the country. He went to Oklahoma. No, I didn't. They're the best team in the country. He All went right. to Oklahoma. These eyes and this mind tell you they're the best team in the country. <laughs> All right. If you ask the bowl matchup, just give me two teams. Miami and Oklahoma right now. Looks like Miami and Oklahoma right now. All I can tell you is that we've got uh, Arizona State and Cal on our network next week. For our we have